I don't need the top ten. That's not what I asked for. Well, zero. Twenty. I'll just go by and just wing it for yourself. Um, what's going on, everybody? It's G from the F Word, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be that type of show today. Awkward, very awkward, very awkward. I'm very annoyed, and it just happened in the past two minutes. But you know, have to tough it out and just deal with it. Ignorance, deal with the ignorance. Oh, I'm getting on Chris Evans, by the way, this episode, Let and how do. much of a fucktard he's being. The guy from Hot Ones? No. Oh, Chris, Chris Evans. Evans. Captain, Captain America. America. Oh, that Chris Evans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, spoilers. I'm getting on Chris Evans. Oh, that's Sean Evans I'm thinking of. Yeah, you're thinking Sean Evans. I've, n- I've only seen two episodes of Hot oh. Ones. What do you do? But it does look really funny. I'll get into it in a bit. We haven't seen Shazam, so no, we're not talking about Shazam. Yeah, we haven't seen Shazam yet. Um, are you going at all this weekend? You I'm guys? going on Sunday, yeah. You're going Sunday? You're not going at all? No. Because of time? Mm, yes. Because of time? I might go... Saturday. Maybe I'll take Soph to go see it on Saturday. It looks like it'd be something she'd really enjoy. Because I think her favorite MCU movie is Ragnarok. Okay, I'm feeling better. Yes, welcome everybody to the F word. Um, Everybody that's listening from wherever you're listening from. No, we're not live on Instagram this week. So if you're listening to this on your usual Saturday and you'll be like, oh, I was there on Thursday on Instagram and I couldn't find them. That's the reason why. Um, hope everyone's doing good. I hope everyone's had a good time uh, this week. How was your guys' week? Good. Answering Greg Moore's question. What was his question? Secured Endgame tickets. Yes. A day oh, yeah. early. Yeah, that happened. You know what's really weird? You'd think that they'd like prep the servers. Like Infinity War almost broke it too. And they didn't they have some issues? Or did uh, they go I don't think good? Infinity War was as bad. No. No, no. I, no I'm not saying it but, was uh, as bad. It, you, there's no way to really plan for that it's just the way the traffic works but you'd be able to see like what your systems can handle i imagine from last year they'd be like wow we were getting really close um some websites i think did crash not oh, all of them well cineplex ended up not crashing fully but it's basically it was super slow so i'm talking up, about for end game or end yeah, game, yeah. yeah and then i i ended up just going to the kiosk and no problems wait for what <laughs> huh for what end game he you bought, bought tickets, tickets. Yeah, I'm, I'm going another day too oh, oh okay well, I actually have to go get tickets like, for another day. It's like viewing by the two way, of like five, probably. <laughs> by, by the way, that Monday, I'm most likely not going to be there. Oh, you bastard. To where we need to be, because I'll bastards. probably go see it a second time on the Monday. Oh, I'll be there. Oh, you birdie bastard. Yeah. Good, good, and good, good, also, good, good, good. by the way, we're not doing a live show the week of. We're just going to do a regular show, and we're going to release it on Saturday. So if it's like the week of Endgame, and you're like, I don't want to get spoiled or anything, trust me. We're just going to not really talk about it at all. We're going to have another program because we're actually going to record it before we see Endgame. So there's no spoilers to be had. Um, Where do you guys want to start? This is the first week of ranking the MCU to get the official F-Words MCU ranking. Are we not doing them all? I said MCU. Yeah, 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 but we're doing them all, not the first week of it. No, no, no. Sorry. This is the first week. And then next week, we're breaking it down even further. And then the week of Endgame, that last, that third week, that's when, don't you, that's what happens when you skip I, You're really confusing the way you phrase it. Yeah, you, you, ref, you phrase it differently. So this is what I mean. We're going to have the 18 right now. Oh, okay. Okay. This is not including the Avengers. And we're not going to do it right away because I want to talk about some other stuff. This is going to be, or do you guys want to do it now and then get into other stuff later? No. We have like all together to talk about. Uh, this will oh, be the longest thing. So Joker trailer. Mm-hmm. That was a big one. Um, Chris Evans being um, not very Captain America like, despite people thinking he is. Uh, Black Widow movie and uh, Endgame trailer. You guys didn't see it. Let's no. start there. You guys didn't see the trailer. Nope. No. After after just I like, caught your your comments of uh, it gave stuff. away too much. I'm like, hey, I don't want to see this one. I was very pleased with the very last one, the one before it that came. I was like, I don't need to see any more. Yeah. And this is probably the first time I've never actually watched the other trailer. So by the way, that's V Vasily, my brother on and Anthony. I forgot to introduce everybody. And I'm G, of course. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. You are just you're just avoiding everything from now on. Right. Yes. OK. Yeah. Are you shutting? Are you going to do a, like a blackout? The week or like a couple days of or like from Thursday and Friday or something. My fans usually don't spoil stuff for me. You're so if I'm going to see it like, yeah, like 
I don't know. I just feel like I should be good. Um, yeah, I you watched decide. it. Yeah. Um, because our good friend, dear friend, Jimmy Cunos, uh, decided to send it to me and, uh, I saw it. And the, the, the thing was, is that right off, like the thumbnail on it was something. Yeah, exactly. Um, the thumbnail alone showed something, right? And I wouldn't say a part of me is feeling like they spoiled it, some things, but another part of me is like, this is stuff I already knew was going to happen. Yeah. You just didn't want to see it. Well, I would have, real? I would have rather have seen, well, and that's another very good point, which how many of, how much of it was doctored, right? Yeah. Um, so it was good. I got goosebumps. I really like it. Like, I, I liked a lot of it, actually, the whole thing. And it had some really awesome moments. Mm-hmm. But there was just one of them where I was like, I kind of wish I would have just saw that in the movie. But yeah. it's if also going to even be there. <laughs> it, w- it was also a one second thing yeah. in the entirety of a three hour and two minute video or two movie, three, three hour, two minute movie. So, and we know that there's time travel involved and there's other stuff. So, really some don't. of the things that I'm thinking, I'm like, Trying to follow Black Widow's hair, that's been the most consistent thing. Like, if you if you see her hair, then her hair will be able to let you like know. The lengths, the color, all that length stuff. Length and color and everything in the okay. other trailers. Where in time they might be. Mm-hmm. Or when in time they might be. Yeah. Uh, so, that was a that was, thing, that was a good one. Uh, but And then there was a really cool shot at the end of that trailer that's, like, even just that little still. Was really mm-hmm. awesome. um, but I'm probably going to now just not see anything. Well, that was the final trailer. Yeah, you can't really see anything else. They didn't need to. No, I I thought the final trailer was the one before where you see them all walking together. That that was my thing. I'm like, why would you need to throw this out? You didn't need, like, just because you're putting the tickets out. Yeah. You could have released a 60-second splice of the other trailers that were there. Yeah. Right? Um, Just felt really off in the sense that you just didn't need to. Like, this seems like yeah. a rookie movie. This seems like Age of Ultron type of stuff where we need to push this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, not that I'm worried about it or not or anything, but, yeah, it was a, it was a bit off. Uh, Joker trailer. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. No? no that's, Talk that's about it. it. I well, People ahead. are, like, I remember, like, I just when I saw that trailer, people were praising it. I'm just recalling, like, Zack Snyder and people bashing him for his movies being too dark and, like, not, like, superhero-esque. Yeah. So I don't know. I f- I'm excited for it just because it looks different and it's not like just the mm-hmm. same thing rehash over and over. Definitely. Yeah. I like how it like it looks like I read uh, somebody said that's not me, but it's going to be a movie about depression, not like the actual Joker. Yeah. Because you got to see like the notepad about him like talking about all that. Yeah. I also found it weird. The guy got his ass beat like quite a bit in the trailer. Oh, quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. But what you did notice is the first time he got beat, he was in pain. And the second time he was smiling. Yeah. It's one thing to note. See, and then the the correlation between his like his relationship with his mother, mm-hmm. which is very interesting. That actually reminds me of the Penguin in the Gotham series. Oh, mm-hmm. so he, he kind of had a really close relationship with his mother, loved her, but he was sadistic at the end of the day. Well, like the Penguin, anyways. Yeah. He was oh, sadistic the, the, and, the penguin, and trying yeah. to think. But Joker is going to get to that point eventually. Sure. So that's what I'm interested to see how that plays out, uh, that relationship. But you see it's a very depressing individual. He's trying to see the best in humanity, but it's looking like he's being let down in every freaking moment. Like he's seeing the worst of the worst, which then turns him. So how you said at first it hurts him. And he's like, oh, this sucks. And he's like, okay, bring this on kind of thing. And he's, his mind's kind of turning on him. Well the, well, the song at the end of it, or the song going through it, smile if even if your heart is breaking. Yeah. Like that's. Okay, so one of my favorite movies is uh, Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. Actually, pretty much almost everything from Martin Scorsese. And uh, another movie was uh, Mean Streets. If you haven't seen those two movies mm-hmm. in particular, uh, I saw Mean Streets years ago, so I have very little yeah. uh, thoughts about it. Um, I just remember liking it. But Taxi Driver, mm-hmm. which I saw about eight months ago yeah. or something like that, this really reminds me of a gritty 70s style Scorsese movie. Mm -hmm. My only concern going into this movie, like before this trailer came out, was Todd Phillips because he's primarily comedic. Um, But then I look at guys like Adam McKay, Mm -hmm. who when he did, you know, Step Brothers and I believe Old School and stuff, then he did the big short and Mm -hmm. his whole career transformed. Yeah. So my guess, my thought process is, and I hope this is the case, this movie is going to be the turning point for Todd Phillips as a director Mm -hmm. where people are going to be like, Okay, you've done some comedies, old school, classic, Starsky and Hutch um, mm-hmm. is another one, and uh, the Hangover movies and stuff like that. Yep. This looks really good. Mm-hmm. Like, this looks like, because we never, we've never had a Joker yet, live action Joker at least, that actually dives into the psyche 
mm-hmm. and, and watching the the, the growth transformation the, yeah. the transformation of a normal person to that mm-hmm. um so that's what i'm interested in and taxi yeah. driver very much played with the psychological impact of society and how it's turned and when someone yeah. looks at the world as ugly mm-hmm. and only sees it as ugly yeah so i think that in and of itself is huge i had a hitchcockian vibe uh, like a psycho vibe with uh, the mom and, and the son yeah. relationship. Now, I don't know if it's because, okay, my guess is the mom's going to die. But something's going to happen. Something's she gonna looks happen. old and frail as it exactly. is. So, yeah, and that'll be his turning point where he just like loses it. So my question is, does he kill her? And then like, does he snap and then kill her? Mm-hmm. Or does she die? He snaps and then he goes on i think that that's, that's a coin be, toss right away that's like gonna be you, a very big turning point for his character yeah. and which i think is a brilliant way to do it him killing would definitely break him more yep but the other way would break him in a he, different way yeah um and then zazzy beats is in here who was uh domino in uh deadpool 2 okay and um uh, is that the girl he's on a date with kind of thing yeah. okay i never paid attention to that and then <laughs> just the vibe of it like the city Someone mentioned it in another podcast. So like the city feels like it's its own character. Like you know when you get to mm-hmm. some settings and places, and we're like, it feels like this is a part of the movie. Because it's set later uh, in older times. Right? Well, it looks like nineties, nineties, eighties. No, no, no. I, I'm on. I think this is closer to that seventies time period. Okay, I, I, but I'm not. I can't confirm. I'm just that trying yet. to think the vehicles that were, yeah. and then you can kind of get to see. That's a good point. Um, yeah, but I'm not. I can't confirm. Just trying to think the vehicles that were, and then you can kind of get to see. That's a good point. When I was watching the trailer, it looked like Arkham City, mm-hmm. like the game, yeah, but oh. like in real life. Oh, like that's not a Arkham bad Asylum. Point. Was pretty cool. Yeah. I also have a theory that the mother is the one depressed, not Joker, and he goes okay. to Arkham Asylum just to like go, like kind of visit with her. Yeah. Because oh. I don't know. I feel like it'd just be a nice twist, but I have no idea. That'd be interesting. It's really hard to say. Yeah, because I won't. Because again, the the trailer just shows that he's just getting beaten one mm-hmm. after the other, and the city yeah. itself is kind of engulfing him yeah. until he ends up more or less subduing to the city, if you yeah. will, and all the really bad things, and then coming out being the mm-hmm. prince of darkness or whatever they call him is it prince yeah. of darkness is that the joker's tag i don't think it's darkness no anyways but, but uh, also bruce wayne was in the trailer where uh i didn't realize this either like somebody pointed it out but there was a kid i think he like put his hands on his mouth and like did a smile yeah that was bruce wayne oh really apparently hmm. i could be totally wrong but that's what somebody said so i didn't question it that's really interesting then because I think there was a. I remember there was a theory going around that this isn't the real mm-hmm. Joker. Heath Ledger, it's like going to lead to Heath Ledger's Joker. Exactly. Like okay. this connects to him being kind of like in, like you mentioned, Gotham. Yeah. Where he was inspired by, and then his brother kind of takes up and everything mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So he could be the the inspiration for the Joker to come. Yeah. I hope they don't go into like chemicals and shit like that. I think that'd be really weird. Yeah. I, I would know. rather them keep it grounded. Yeah. And and go from there. Yeah, but the interesting thing with the uh, the DC movies in general, like look how many versions of Batman we've seen now, and Tons. how many versions of the Joker we've seen now, like this a is good amount. Probably what six? I think easily seven. Seven for live you, action. Live action, I believe it's six. You so have Caesar Romero, Jack Nicholson, Jared Leto, Ledger, um, Ledger and then sorry, five. Yeah, unless I'm missing one. Uh, you counting Joaquin Gotham six. as well. Oh, I guess yeah. Gotham would be six. Uh, I can't remember his name, but yeah. And then Joaquin Phoenix would be the six seven, or seven, seven or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's it's pretty interesting. We've seen so many. Like I don't know. Is it too much now? Have they gone like even me when I first said there's a Joker movie? I'm like, why? What's that's the a good point? Question. Yep, that's so it's like we've seen question. how many versions. Now we're gonna get another Batman. So the now fourth or the sixth or seventh Batman on top of everything. So, cause then you introduce Gotham as well on that front. So like we're seeing so many different versions of this mm-hmm. character, but the Joker also isn't connected to the DC, uh, whatever world. To no, DC. not the DC. That's, you a good, know, that's a good point. He's not. No, no. this okay. is its own separate standalone like piece. This is just but it, no, but Joker. it is part of DC because they're in Gotham. Yeah, that means no, 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 part but, of the but, universe. Yeah, no, I, no oh, the DCU is yeah. different. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying DC comics and DC related in general. This so, is going to be a one off. I get that. Yeah, this is going to be still, a yeah. This is it. That's it. We're going to tell the story of Arthur um, being in this situation, yeah. being becoming the person he's going to become, which I thought is really clever with the Pulling. like because you always think of how they're going to make the smile interesting, mm-hmm. like. Ledger's was awesome with the how I got these scars and the stories yeah. that he was coming up with. Yeah. This one with him putting like, oh, it was really good. It's almost like just forcing it to happen. Yeah. It's cool. I do disagree with you on the point that like we've had too many Jokers. Mm-hmm. Because this isn't like just a normal Joker thing. 
True. Like this is the origin. And not many people actually know the Joker origin, True. including you myself. Like, I just know he fell and that's like, it. chemicals yeah. and that's it. Except but for Gotham. Be, but do we need, the thing is, I think the argument, uh, at least my argument was, do we need to, like, even with Han Solo, I don't need to know how he got his name. I don't need to know anything about yeah. his past or anything like that. Boba Fett's another one. So maybe the Joker's in that conversation because mm. they have been different Jokers to his point. Yeah, of course. Everyone's brought something different to the like, character for yeah. sure. And, and then this one just seems like, this one seems like the one that I really would love to deep dive into because yeah. it's actually him. Mm-hmm. No Batman. Like, not taking away, obviously taken away from Ledger because that's yeah. what everyone's going to compare it to, but it's just going to be him yeah. and watching that transformation. Because the cool thing about Heath Ledger's Joker, you mm-hmm. don't know his origin. Yeah. You have an idea, but and it's the all theory. Fake. <laughs> but, well, it's all cir- uh, it's all circumstantial. It's yeah. all hypothetical. It's all whatever, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I'm on board. So Greg asks where we think Joaquin's Joker will rank. It's hard tough to I say. I think well, I better don't know. than Leto. I, I think behind time. Ledger. Like I feel like it's going to be a mix up between Ledger, yeah. uh, Nicholson, uh, Joaquin. Yeah. I think what's going to happen is this: if if it's as good a movie as it looks like it's going to be. I feel that people are going to be having the all out war, the ledger versus Joaquin Phoenix, because Joaquin Phoenix, everything he's in, Mm -hmm. he's good. Yeah, he's a little wonky in real life, but he's good. He's method. That's why this Joker iteration, I believe, will be the one that's going to divide everybody between the ledger Mm -hmm. and the Joaquin Phoenix and the Phoenix fans. If it's as good as I think it is or it could be terrible. But I don't think – I think if it's incredible and his performance is incredible, people are still going to feel guilty for saying, well, you know, Heath Ledger's is still better. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I think it's going to cause that rift. Schism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and because Ledger's uh, – I think that'll dead. be a good – another one after these MCU ones we can do like a Batman Joker rankings and that kind of thing too. Well, it could just be like two and two. I also what do you feel, mean two and two? Well, it, I mean, if you count Mark Hamill's Joker, that would be a Well, a you, race. you do Gotham, you do Mark Hamill's, like everything. You can yeah. include it all. They're all Joker characters. Anything live action, I would say, is worth it's fair. noting. I feel like it doesn't matter for me how good Queen Phoenix is, but because due to nostalgia, I'll just be blinded by Heath Ledger and like how much I love the Dark Knight trilogy as a whole. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying, though. Like You won't let yourself... Well, I, would, I will admit it right now. Yeah. I will say I will be blinded by nostalgia. Yeah. That's what I just said. Yeah, people are you're going to be on that side. That's going to be like, no, nope, it was the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. Me, the trilogy doesn't affect me because I still feel like it's only a one two parter because the third one fell again, short for you. Yeah, fell real short again, <laughs> and I rewatched it for like the fourth time, and I'm like, it just gets worse every time I see it. Yeah. But it doesn't. Yeah, bother it's, me. but it, 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 they're going to be two completely different Jokers though. Too. That's sure. the other thing. So maybe Ledger's Joker is the one that just works for him the best, mm-hmm. and you get to see him going up against Batman. Yeah. That in and of itself is like a, a different different dynamic, whereas this is just going to be a character piece. And me, who likes individual character pieces, mm-hmm. this could be the Joker that I I like Ledger's a lot, but this could be the one for me. Yeah. Who knows? Whatever. Fair enough. Um, Black Widow set to do June 20th. They're starting to shoot, and David Harbour, who's the guy that does Hellboy, and he's also in Stranger Things, he's on board. Yeah. I wonder what character. Uh, uh, 80% that he's going to be a Russian. Some Russian like he boss kinda, man. He kind of fits. Yeah, he could do. Yeah, he doesn't quite fit it. the Russian at first. He's when got I the low brow and he's got that henchman look to him. So yeah. I think he might be one of those. Just slap a hat on him, give him an accent, and it'll happen. Fair enough. We'll be an enforcer. Uh, excited for it? No, no. Well, um, well, if I see a trailer, maybe, but like right now, I don't give. Like I don't care. Yeah, it, it should be interesting. To see her story where she. I will give her. I want to see that red ledger. That she had it. Like I will say, like congratulations to her for getting her own movie. But like right now, it's just kind of like yeah. got bigger stuff to worry about. Like for movies, <laughs> I'm just. Uh, I- I'm hoping they really like. I hope it's rated R. It won't be. I think they already said it's not going to be rated R. That's a shame. Yeah, and because I feel if any of those MCU ones, it, that'd be rated R for sure. Yeah, because I think if they do, kind of character she is, and if they do, I think that would be the better way to go about it. And not mind you, rated R only it has to do with gore mm-hmm. and it has to do with swearing, right? Mm-hmm. Because you could still touch on really, really, really uh, heavy topics. In a PG thirteen or whatever movie, so or eighteen, <laughs> so he's eighteen A. That'd be another one. I don't know if they still have that rating or not, or if it's just thirteen to R. <laughs> it doesn't um, matter. They don't care. They no, don't care I either. don't think so either. But yeah, no, I I want to. I, I specifically want them to double down on what she said, where she's not the only monster, and I want to see that monster that she's created for, because I think that'll make her just a really 
fleshed out character, like a really yeah. great fleshed out character and read on her ledger. Those are two quotes from the MCU that I want them to, to really dive Touch into. On. And I want to see them and I want to, which leads her to become, mm-hmm. you know, in, in the, the uh, Avengers or me. Black Widow. We know. Black Widow. That Be careful, though. Last time there was a badass line in the MCU movie and they did a origin movie in the past. They uh, ruined it. So it's true. But I don't think they can ruin her herself saying that I was a monster as opposed to a fucking cat <laughs> scratching out a badass character and completely ruining and taking away from him. Yeah. C- good comparison, Anthony. I'm just saying. I'm good. Also, do I feel like it's not a bad thing that it's not rated R because I understand why they did it just because it is like their second like female movie mm-hmm. it's like they want to be more inclusive so everybody can go and see it mm-hmm. yeah which i understand why but i don't really again it doesn't matter to me because i just don't really care it's not a movie for me yeah uh, do the little thingy on the make sure that it's still going okay there you go good great um okay wow we burned through those in like 15 minutes okay well, i'm sure there'll be tons earlier. of discussion anyway yeah, in no. our ranking there so. will be there <laughs> will be it's gonna be a slow rank like i feel we're gonna have to discuss why we gave the ranking to yeah, so. yeah 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 and i'm gonna be writing them down and adding them up so um again before we get into the mcu ranking this is not including um the avengers movies that's the rules i've set out the only thing i wasn't sure of and i thought about after the civil war count yes yeah that's captain america that's captain america okay just checking just because, again, it could have that extra oomph because there's all those other characters and then you're just like, oh, man, there's so many more characters. But it's our list. Like, why would anybody care? No, I would care. Well, I want to keep rules. it as fair as possible. Well, I we made the we rules. Set the, exactly. You set the rules. So. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I'm just I'm just deliberating here. Uh, and then we're going to add them up. And then next week, we're going to narrow them down to the top five. Uh, or no, sorry, the top ten. And then we're going to whittle that one down. So we give them different rankings after we have the different lists? Or because won't you just know which one's number one? Yeah, see, my, I think I gave them a ranking based how much I enjoy them. Yeah. And where they... I guess so. But no, so you... no, 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 you won't. And I'll tell you why. Because your ranking and your your scores mm-hmm. plus mine, it's called at the law, the averages. Okay. So you could guys, you guys could score one movie a nine and I could score it a four and it'll drop it down all the way. I feel like it's going to be Captain Marvel. Yeah. So <laughs> not a nine, but uh, uh, you're not going to like my rating. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so um, anyways, th- that's yeah. where, that's how that's going to work. So yeah, you could have your order and you yeah. can have your order, but this is all going to jumble up the orders and sure. we're not going to say the scores right now. We're going to release them. Next all right, week. sure. But if they're dedicated enough, you know, they bring out that pen and paper and they start writing. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe. Uh, and then next week, it'll probably end up being revealed as as whatever. Yeah. Um, and then we'll make our official list. And then the week after that, it's endgame territory and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, my God. You made a chart. Like, you actually made, went on docs. No, I actually found this. Oh, <laughs> oh smart. Yeah. <laughs> I was um, like, I didn't want to write them out. So I just. <laughs> I'm going to. Okay. No, I'm going to get into Chris Evans right now. Okay, go for it. This might take yeah, a while, Yeah, what happened? Too. I don't know. Like, what, yeah, what, what is your big beef now? <laughs> okay. So Chris Evans has always been a social justice warrior, yep. and th- lately he's been doubling down a lot. Okay. And this is going to fall into the same category as you guys might have thought I shat on Captain Marvel too much, a.k.a. Really? Brie Larson. Oh, I can go on forever with these guys. Forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and Chris Evans is no better. The only difference, and I said it last time, Chris Evans, Mark Ruffalo, and all those guys waited until they became household names and big stars before they started really going into their political stuff. Yeah. And the worst part is now Kevin Feige is co-signing on his shit. So one of the things that Chris Evans said, because he's an anti-Trump person, because now it's going to be cool, and because Hollywood is a complete leftist organization, if they can push everything to the furthest regressive left possible, they're going to do it. That's the script that they have. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, now Chris Evans is talking about how he's going. he doesn't mind alienating the uh, fan base. These are his words in The Hollywood Reporter. Yeah. Or losing out on jobs, which, by the way, Chris Evans, you're no fucking hero, okay? You're not going to lose out on any jobs because you're following the same script Hollywood wants you to follow. The whole anti-Trump, we're going to be all on the SJW side of things and completely ruin everything for everybody. Just like Brie Larson said herself, she's using Captain Marvel as a way to push her feminist agenda, which, by the way, Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Brie Larson... You're an idiot. Okay. Just going to put that out there. So what did he say? So, no, that was the one thing he said. Oh. He doesn't oh. mind alienating it. If so, it's kind of, What's the context? What's, why? In regards to his politics, his political viewpoints. So okay. the other thing that he was talking about was how he was, him and Tom Brady were friends. He's a huge fan of the Patriots. But now he comes out and says, well, you know, Tom Brady, who is a Trump supporter. Yeah. You know, I, it'd be really sad to find out, but I guess I'll have to cut ties with him too. 
Mm-hmm. So essentially what Chris he Evans is publicly? Yeah. Huh? So what Chris Evans is doing now, he's doing the oh, you're friends with that person, well we can't be friends anymore. Yeah. Like a child. Listen, Chris Evans, thanks for bringing us Captain America. But once Captain America is done and you're left there with your tweets that for some reason Kevin Feige is fucking co-signing all over the place, yeah, it's not going to it's not going to happen. And the reason I bring this up is because you can have any political view you want as long as it doesn't exclude inclusivity. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. So, for instance, if he said, listen, I'm a, I do not like Trump as a, a Trump at all. Mm-hmm. That's great. You can have that. But to say that I don't mind alienating people and excluding people and not and not being friends with people because of that. Dude, everybody in Hollywood is having that same conversation and it's getting tiring. That's why SNL has gone down the tubes. Let's be honest. I don't know if anybody's paying political. attention. All they're doing is the same jokes over and over again. Yeah. So Chris Evans, it's kind of gotten to the point where you're really just bugging the hell out of a lot of people. And just because Hollywood signs up on it, signs up for it, sorry, doesn't mean that it's right. And I'm not going to be the type of person that's going to say just stick to acting because if you have influence, mm-hmm. you, sh- you can have your platform and you should do it. Denzel Washington, when asked about it, he said, you know what? I need to be more informed about everything before I make a comment. Yeah. You want to talk about like stud yeah. is Denzel Washington. And when, when someone specifically asked him at the premiere of one of his movies about politics, where these guys wow. are willing to stand on their tweets and shout out from the other side that this is where we are. If you're not on this side, then we can't be friends, which is essentially yeah. what it is. Then sorry, you're not for diversity. Mm-hmm. You're not what you should be for is for a diversity of, of knowledge. Yeah. That's what it should be. So that's all I'm going to say for that. Hmm. So I don't know how you guys feel about that. If you guys have any the po- uh, comments about it. political game in the States is just ridiculous. It splits families more than just like Chris Evans being uh, uh, the star that he is. And now he's alienating friends and, and fans and all this stuff. Just say your piece that this is how I support this. And beyond like, you don't need to go into further that I'm willing to alienate people so that part yeah i'd be pissed off too but the states is just nuts when it comes to their politics it's just but it's getting there it's getting like that here too by the way it's well not, for sure because that's, i'm just talking hollywood gone more well i'm just way that yeah hollywood but that's is. not just hollywood that's everywhere no no, no but, but but trump ho- supporters have been split like trump and non-trump supporters alone just call it that have split families have split this so that it's just more public with him but that's what i'm saying yeah, though I the get responsibility it. and the onus falls on him just like every I other ball player that stands behind something when Colin Kaepernick did his thing, yeah, he didn't say that if you don't do this, then I'm like, then screw all of you guys. Yeah. He said, I'm going to do my protest because if he wants to run buck naked with a Captain America shield screaming, all the power to you, man. Yeah. You do what you want to do, but you shouldn't call for for exclusivity on that. You shouldn't call for if you don't do this then we can't be friends. Yeah. That doesn't open up any type of discussion or dialogue. And that's the most anti-Captain America thing I can think of. Yeah. You're really looking at it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind, it's kind this weird thing where, yes, you have the platform and yes, you do have the responsibility, but you shouldn't be teaching kids mm-hmm. that if you don't like something and the other person, like if you don't like something the other person likes, then that person is dead to you. Mm-hmm. Because... Here's a little funny story. Leonardo DiCaprio came to Alberta and was filming The Revenant. Yeah. And then he went on this big tirade on how, look at what global warming's done to Alberta. But all that was happening was a Chinook came by and yeah. he didn't know anything about a Chinook. Yeah. yeah and he yeah. looked like an idiot in front of a lot of people. And that was, yes, he talks a lot about climate change, all the power to you. He has his stance. And again, whether you agree with it or not. But the thing is, you should be informed enough to know that when you're in fucking Alberta, they're Chinooks. Yeah. It's not just global warming and climate change and all that stuff. And I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. I'm not saying I'm not on either side of it, really. Mm-hmm. I really don't like, not that I don't care, but I don't you pay know, attention I, to it. I haven't, I'm not as informed enough to make an, an educated like, point on it. But anyway, plead the fifth. <laughs> sure. But you should wait until you're more informed. You should look at the other yeah. side and you should consider the fact that, listen, I am responsible for a lot of things. And if I say something, my words matter to a young kid watching my movies. Yeah. Because, again, this is a brilliant quote from Rita Hayworth, who was um, an actress in, I believe, the 70s or 60s or 70s. People will go to sleep with with Rita Hayworth and wait or sorry, with her character in the movie that she was in and wake up with me. Mm -hmm. 
which meant that everybody and it, it's a, it's more it was more towards a sad point of it but we look at these stars and we because we watch their movies we feel like we know them yeah but when they wake up they're Chris Evans they're not Captain America yeah and so kids are still looking at you as Captain America so my point is be more informed and consider the other side before you start making these hard stances and no wonder Hollywood's going to back you like that's what their whole stance is right now. Yeah. It's 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 taking that one side and going to the extremes of it, and that's the way that we're working on. So, anyways, that's my Captain America rant. Gotcha. Or Chris Evans rant, not Captain America. Um, what else you guys got before we get into this? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. All right. MCU ranking. The reviews are uh, what do you say? G, tell me how you really feel. Oh, buddy, don't even get me started. <laughs> He already got himself started. He doesn't need, yeah, you don't need to get me started. started. Spoiler alert. I hated the Gillette ad. Let's just put it that way. Wow. Uh, let's get into this. MCU ranking. Okay. Like we discussed, where it's a point system, we all have our own separate scores. We're going to tally them up, and then we're going to get our official rank. Sure. In this episode right now, we're going to go through the list. Mm-hmm. Standalones only. No, And by standalones, I mean... No Avengers, no Avengers Age of Ultron, and no Infinity War. Am I missing anything? No. Okay. Then we compile all that together, and then we end up getting our ranking. So next week, we will reveal the ranking, which will then be a week before Endgame. Any questions? None. Oh, the other thing I... The other the other rule I had. No two films can have the same score. So yeah. that's where it's... Well, on your own list. On your own list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if if one movie I have is a 5.2, no other movie can be a 5.2. If I have mm-hmm. another one at an 8.8, no other movie can be at an 8.8. And to give you an idea, I did all this before I got into the Captain America stuff uh, when I actually worked on this list, by the way. So I just did some research today that really... So skewed your numbers? <laughs> no, no, no. I did the numbers I did the numbers first and then I oh, went into okay. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard about some stuff yesterday and I said, that I'm going to do my though. list first and then I'm going to look this stuff up. So I did my list. And then I did that. It wouldn't affect. It shouldn't affect it, your... No, it doesn't because okay. it was like that the whole time. Anyways. Um, okay. Start from the top. How did you guys go? How, no. How did you guys do it? On enjoyment. I'm basing this all on enjoyment. Straight enjoyment? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Enjoyment. Okay. Basically what I liked the best about it and yeah. Was it like a point system? Like I like these five things versus these four things? or I, like- I didn't go that in depth. No. Oh. I What I did though is like I had to go back and I – because I have time. I sat and actually skipped through all of them to see like what I sure. – like I forgot a few of them. I'm like, okay, let's see what I like about this and how it actually – I did my blind ranks. Then I went back and checked everything and mm. kind of went from there. And yeah, based on enjoyment alone. Like where – That's it, fair. Yeah. I um yeah I did it on enjoyment. I ended up breaking up the categories. So I put slots. Like so I put one, two, three, four, and five. And I put all of the movies that I felt – were being placed in those spots. So like I ended up having a lot more sevens yeah. than I had any other numbers. But then that well, I think that's the MCU me, sweet spot or like sevens. I noticed that too. I've, I've ranked that, a little bit higher on a few things just because I enjoy stuff. Well, there's a few <laughs> ones that are like high, high. For sure, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. But no, average seven. He's, he's got a, like, if I were to rank the entire MCU taking out the Avengers movies, yeah. I would probably rank the entire thing at like a 7.8 or a 7.9. High sevens, yeah. Because. Eights, yeah. Just the law of averages alone, which we will see right now on the pre-endgame MCU ranking by the F word. Uh, it's kind of Shatner. Uh, what what happened? It's like Shatner. <laughs> Captain Kirk. No, it's not that. Captain it was pretty Kirk. close. Really? A little oh, bit. Shit. So you broke it up. <laughs> okay. Actually, before we get into that, so I, I'm still playing a lot of Red Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kept keep catching myself like um, doing Red Dead isms. So, like, in the game where you go around and you say hi to people and it's like, howdy, mister. Hey, mister. Ma'am. And then, like, he pats his horse and he's like, yeah, it's a good girl. Wow. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking we're driving the other day and I had the window rolled down and I didn't do a, my first inkling on the guy on the road to be like, hey, mister. <laughs> Was his wow. window down? Did he hear you? No, I didn't say it. I, like, oh, But, wow. like, it's seeping into my world. Just like when I was in Italy and I'm like, I just want to climb all these buildings and stab Templars. Yeah. Anyways, that was completely random. It has nothing to do with anything. But um, <laughs> Poor Soph. <laughs> here we are. Poor Soph indeed. Yeah. yeah. But she's kind of getting into it because I've been like. Well, it's in the a, background anyway. She'll so. get me, yeah, but she'll get me a coffee or something, which I, I'm actually happy. She's getting into the game a little bit more. Not playing it, but like the story. Watching. But I'll be like. Yeah, hey girl. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Anyways, 
Moving along. Come on, guys. Come <laughs> on, guys. I can't be the only loser at this table. Yeah. Okay. It's really the movies are, for those of you who don't remember, Phase 1, Iron Man, Incredible Hulk. That counts. Yep. Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America 1. Phase, then we got into the Avengers. I color-coded mine. Cool. Phase 2, Iron Man 3, Thor, The Dark World, Winter Soldier, and Guardians of the Galaxy 1. We then get into Avengers Age of Ultron and finish Phase 2 with Ant-Man. Phase 3, Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Homecoming, Thor, Ragnarok, Black Panther, we got into Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Captain Marvel. So... Where do you guys want to start? Well, obviously, we're going to start, start the from top. the beginning. <laughs> okay. Anthony, what did you rank? I'm going to put an A, and I'm going to put a V. There you go. What do you rank Iron Man 1 as? Solid 8. Anthony gives it an 8. Vasily? 8.2. 8.2. Gentlemen, I gave it an 8.8. Uh, where'd you get your, what, like, 8... Give us some. Give us a little bit of a reason. Mm. We have like fucking half an hour to kill. This is like one of those ones where like I feel like we've been on forever. Yeah, you can give, like, wait, There'll be a big discussion later. So I wouldn't worry too much. Okay, like yeah. that. But anyways, go ahead. Uh, level like I, as I stated, like I've seen Iron Man in a while. Like I watched before Endgame, but I don't know. I just feel like from what I remember, it was an enjoyable film. It started mm-hmm. at all, so I'll give it that respect for an eight. Yeah, mad respect. I was along the same thing, being the original that started everything off, and. Uh, the the biggest thing for me is how the suit came together the very first time when it was just like you know everything coming together he did that first flight and then realized what was going on but it, it was very good uh, the only th- even like the uh, the villain in it was okay it wasn't a sure, strong Obadiah. I, I yeah. found the villain in the second one better fun fact he was actually almost going to be the villain for the, the Avengers movies oh interesting Obadiah yeah. he was going to have a son or something like that that was one thing they were workshopping glad they didn't yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I gave it what I did. Um, you? I gave it an 8.8. Uh, a lot of it was based on the fact that it was the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it was also based on the fact that it was it, it is the first one. It did set up everything, and it was such a great start out of mm-hmm. the gate. I watched it about three months ago, yeah. and I'm like, this thing still does hold up. Yeah. And only because of it being, a, again, a character piece. Yeah. And that plays into my other Iron Man-specific rankings mm-hmm. because... I find them to be those character pieces that really kind of resonate with mm-hmm. me more. The cave scene was awesome. Yep. How they set up Tony Stark was awesome. And Robert Downey Jr. was just being aw- like just awesome altogether. Yeah. And then obviously finishing it with, spoiler, him making the announcement, I am Iron Man, yeah. which is just such an awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome way to do it. I'll tell you the one thing that really... 8.3. Sat- 8.3? The thing that sat with me the best was the end credit scene, how Nick Fury came to him. Oh, and he told them you're part of something bigger yep. now, and you have no idea how much that resonates with not only the the, like, the movie itself, but yep. like what happens with the MCU. And you Shit, think yeah. like, wow, to think back then, that still sits true, and after where they've ended up, kind of thing. So, and that's where a lot of it, like, just there's just like hold, like they, it's almost well, like Babe Ruth. It's pointing his to birthday the stand today too, Robert Downey Jr. 54. And Evans gave him a really good shot. I was like, thanks for carrying us these ten years, kind of thing. She totally so, did. So there you go. Which, but it was really cool of Robert Downey Jr. to give props to Chris Evans as well, like in terms of just like, hey, oh, man, like, yeah, whatever. Um, okay, so you said that's a total of eight point three. Okay, mm-hmm. um, again, if you guys are following along and you're writing them down, then great. But I'm not going to announce the actual order until next week. Incredible Hulk with the, um, I guess it was the reboot before yep. the reboot. Yep. Um, with Edward yep. Norton, mm-hmm. Tim Roth, uh, William Hurt. Mm-hmm. And um, what was her name? Aerosmith's daughter. Liv Tyler. Liv Tyler. She needs to be in more things. I was rewatching well, she was Lord in, of the Rings. Yeah, there you go. But that's just one thing. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anthony, what did you rank? Incre- what do you rank? Incredible. First Hulk number at? comes as a four. Okay. Just four. Yeah. Okay. Five. And you gave it a five. I gave it a five point two. Okay. Is it because it just wasn't memorable? It just like, wasn't memorable. Okay. Yeah, remember some scenes. That's it. That's my thing too. The best. There's two good scenes. Obviously, the one he was fighting on the campus, and then the mm-hmm. one he was fighting at the end with uh, Abomination. So, yeah, it was. And Edward Norton did pretty decent as Bruce Banner. He but was fine. Yeah, he was good overall. But yeah, it just didn't, compared to everything else, it just really sits low. And because it's, 
it's one of the only ones that there was a recast of the character. Yep. So that really sits. So I don't know if it would have been better if Mark Ruffalo was in it or whatever, but. Yeah, well, and that and that's where I'm trying to. I was trying to separate the two because it's yeah. like, okay, they had to reboot this, so it should technically get negative score. Yeah. And I totally get your four because I've seen it a lot more times, mm-hmm. only because I really liked the Hulk scenes. Like the in on the campus, it was great. Yeah. I liked how they showed him in the warehouse in the opening where he was kind of going through the shadows and the stuff yeah. and everything. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of stuff in there that was good. And honestly, there's times where I feel like if Robert Downey Jr. didn't show up at the end, mm-hmm. then this wouldn't actually be part of the MCU. No, realistically, it would just not. be like its own thing. The the one cool connection too was the fact that, like you saw at the end with him doing his breathing and stuff like that, yep. he was able to turn. So that was yep. his. That kind of played into how Mark Ruffalo's character is like, "That's my trick. I'm always angry." So yep. Edward Norton had kind of built that for him when you think about it, and that way he was able to control it at, at a glance it wasn't a random occurrence so well and tim roth i'm always a fan of he's like, awesome yeah I, i'm a huge fan of him so i thought he was better before he became the abomination personally i thought when the True, abomination yeah. showed up it was okay but it just ended up being this like gross cgi yeah, fest. But, and it was really dark like it wasn't oh, yeah at least the campus scene you can see mm-hmm. this you couldn't see anything yeah. so that's my thing so sorry you gave it a four a five and what is it 4.7 4.7 uh, that looks like a point four four point seven three repeated, of course. Well, you round down. Yes, we do. Iron Man 2. That was with Whiplash. That's when he discovered a new element. That's when he worked on one of the coolest suit-ups with the mm-hmm. briefcase. Yeah. Um, and it had one of my personal favorite dudes, not from the MCU, but just in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I'm now undercutting that by forgetting his name. I ran two. Anyways, what'd you rank it, Anthony? Five. You gave it a five. Anthony gives it a five. And Bashil. Seven three. Seven point three. Mm-hmm. Let's start with you, because I gave it a five point three. So Anthony and I are actually <laughs> quite on. Board. I'm the I'm the one that's gonna screw this up. Yeah. Not screw it up, but skew it anyways. Skew uh yeah, I don't know. I found it. Sam fun. Rockwell. Fuck. Sorry. Yeah. So Sam Rockwell was in it. That's probably He's a big awesome. one for me. Um the whole breakdown of like you know you have that element of him dying again kind of thing like he's he's not going to survive the this checkerboard the tech yeah. checkerboard thing yeah. uh the fury part was really good like again the suit up was probably one of the biggest things that drove me and the villain that was probably the biggest you like thing. the villain hey? yeah and then him creating the new element that was pretty sweet how he did everything so okay that's why i kind of gave it in the middle ish and yeah that's why i liked it a lot anthony it was mediocre Yep. Like, I was memorable, like, the suit-up scene, like, the whiplash thing, the weapons. Mm-hmm. I thought it was cool. But it was just, like, a basic movie. Like, there wasn't anything really special about it. So mm-hmm. Fair enough. Um, I think I gave it the extra three because it ties in Peter Parker. That that, that theory well, that, that ended was up like, being confirmed. Uh, afterwards, um, they just did it because they couldn't do it. Probably, for sure. Mm-hmm. But still, like, I was like, I'd had it. No, but it, I didn't feel it was as memorable. I thought the only reason it was good, as good as it was, was because Sam Rockwell mm-hmm. looked like he was enjoying himself and Robert Downey Jr. again being Robert Downey Jr., which is great. And it introduced Black Widow and I thought she was really good yeah, in it. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but every... And War Machine, right? Yeah. They introduced War Machine and I really liked Don Cheadle as War Machine. I'm I actually glad, feel, that was a, See, that was wait, a good recast. Wasn't, I, wasn't he in War, Iron Man 1? No. no. Or like the character like War Machine wasn't? Yeah. Okay. No, War Machine wasn't, but uh, Rhodey Rode, Rode was. Rhodey was. He did have that scene though when he looked at the silver thing and he's like, next time, baby, because he was yeah. going to go use that. Yeah. But then he's like, next time. I, so that, that was a, good a recast. call to him being him. But I felt Terrence so Howard too. wasn't that great in that he's... I've always found him a very like soft spoken person with as a as an actor he does well in those soft spoken so him to be roadie it didn't work even from the very beginning I'm like i don't know i really? didn't like him from the beginning so when they had cheetle that extra uh, style and flair i guess that cheetle brings to it i like it from the obviously the oceans movies he played a different character altogether but it was really good to see him take that on okay okay so 5.8 5 5.86 well, so if you want to round it up to 5.9 okay to you yeah, if it's 5.8, it goes to 5.9. Thor. It's Thor. Thor. Thor 1. Thor. Um, Anthony, what was your ranking? What do I got? I got okay, 8, 4, 5. I'm about to see. Okay, I'll do 6.2. 6.2 for the first Thor. 8. And you give it an 8. Wow. Yeah. Damn. You? 
I gave it a 7.2. Mm, not so bad. Um, so 6.2. Mm-hmm. Well, the, like it didn't make me actually like Thor at all. Like I really didn't like Thor until Thor Ragnarok. Really? Which was like the redeeming movie for him. Me, but like mm. I thought it was interesting. It was cool, but it just didn't make me like Thor as a character. I always thought he was just kind of like the Aquaman of the Avengers pretty much. Oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> I've heard that before. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, you know what? I liked it from the very beginning. It was interesting to see him like fall that hard, be this arrogant would be king. And, uh, he had to redeem himself heavily. Definitely cheesy. And maybe it needed to be like that because of the way the, the tone of the Thor was. But yeah. And then his redemption, of course, getting back his, his powers and that kind of stuff. That was, huge i think so and then you got introduced to a really good loki obviously that was tom hiddleston as loki was really good and you saw his treachery at its finest i guess you can say there or its first glance so the, the birth of it kind yeah of exactly so i i liked it from the very beginning so that's kind of where i was even with all three of the original standalones for like captain iron man either kind of near rankings for me because i like them kind of equally in a way so sure yeah um what's the overall score 7.1. 7.1. I gave it a 7.2 um, because Kenneth Branagh is a Shakespearean actor turned director. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of Kenneth Branagh Shakespearean performances because of school. The show is a lot of them like Hamlet and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and those things. And I felt he nailed everything about what a character like that could be. Yeah. That Shakespearean element, which I thought was really funny that I don't know if they did this on purpose, but the I feel Avengers. like they did. No, no, no. They added it into Thor Ragnarok in the play. So the play oh, that they yeah, were showing yeah, yeah. in Ragnarok was essentially the first and second movie. But yeah. the first one was very dramatic. And I love seeing arrogant characters. Mm-hmm. See, I liked Thor from day one. Yeah, I did. Too. I don't know why. I, maybe it's the hammer. Maybe it's the hair. I don't know what it is. But I love the fact that he was like... I. Like, I don't really like you're really arrogant, but you're charming as hell. Yeah. And then for him to fall and to have that. And you and I have gotten into it all the time. And we like we get in those moments where we both have to apologize to each other. And we always have to like redeem each other yeah. in our eyes at one point. So it resonated a lot. And I love the Lion King. And this reminded me a lot of the Lion King in a way. Yeah. It has very a lot of parallels. But I felt that Kenneth Branagh really nailed it. And I thought it was again, it was charming. It was uh, it worked. Yeah, the action wasn't that great, mm-hmm. but I felt just the character arc in one See, movie. See, yeah, and that's the thing. Really the nice. action wasn't there. It wasn't anything special versus it just on the Ice Nation and like on uh, Jotunheim and yeah. the last scene and that's it. Sure. But the character development was massive. It was great. But yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, Anthony, anything else to add? No, that's pretty much it. Like it's just, yeah. Captain it's America, the first Avenger. Anthony. Seven. Seven and eight one eight point one, and mm-hmm. I gave it a seven point three. So what point one up from Thor? Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony, tell me why ain't nothing but a. Okay. Sorry, I thought it was like an interesting like look into Captain America. It wasn't anything special, but it started off the like, trilogy in a good way because each movie got like better as it went on. So I thought it was cool That's to introduce them. Uh, it was a cool way to lead into the Avengers because it was the first Avenger mm-hmm. until we realized it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, but I figured well, he still is the first Avenger. Technically, they didn't name the Avengers after him, though. That's true, but no. still. Don't get me started, please. Anyways, go on. But yeah, no, I think I thought it was like a cool, like kind of war movie. It was a different style of movie the MCU yeah. like did before. Like it was like I don't mm-hmm. really recall seeing a war like kind of style film. I don't. I haven't seen any of the X Men films, so I don't know if they did that for a Wolverine thing. I'm not no, sure. No, okay. Only, only, only or- the mon- only oranges. They did a montage of him going through the all the wars. Kind of thing. oranges, by yeah, the way. Probably <laughs> X Men oranges. I want them. They're so <laughs> juicy. Wow. Yeah, no, I thought it was a solid start. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like period pieces, so this one definitely hit for me. Like the World War II aspect. Sure. Uh, the character becoming who he is, and he has that. Cap- he is Captain America even before he's Captain America. By like you know what's inside and that's why he gets chosen for the the whole thing um but yeah it was definitely cool seeing him and finally he got to like he was just a little pawn playing those stupid plays and then yeah. finally he got his redeeming moment where like yeah he got to do what he's what he's meant to do kind of thing so um i i rated it a little bit higher than thor 
one because of the fact that the character I liked and the whole time. So again, mm-hmm. Thor I found super charming but arrogant. You always, well, I want to fly around with a hammer and throw yeah. things, but I want to, I want to have what I, I want. I wish I could display or have the convictions that a Steve Rogers has, regardless on if he's a skinny, sickly child. Yeah, and I feel that they nailed that part of him, which allowed me for the rest of the movies to always know Cap's baseline. Yeah. Whereas Iron Man started somewhere and went somewhere else. Thor started somewhere and went somewhere else. He's, he's, the, he's same. the same. Yeah. And he's only had to adapt that to his environment. Yeah. Not he's had to change. And I thought they did a really good job with that. I That's thought the doctor point. was really nice. Oh, um, yeah. He was an awesome. I, I felt they, I felt Peggy was a wonderfully written character. Like, I just like how, again, when yeah. period pieces, it's interesting how they do female characters. Yeah. And I thought they did one for her where, yeah, she had a rank because, like, she was underneath somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like, but at the same time, she was like, because of that, you can tell that she does, she she almost always knows what she has to do. I thought, yeah. But I just, anyways, I felt she was a smart character. Yeah. Um, I wish there was more fighting in it because they, they boil down a lot of it to a montage. Yeah. CGI wasn't, doesn't hold up that great. Whatever. Like the part where they're break, they're destroying all the Hydra yeah. bases, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and I wish the Red Skull was, a, it's kind of an issue, an ongoing issue with the MCU where their mm-hmm. villains are not very memorable. I like this one because I like Hugo Weaving. Yeah. But I, I wish they would have just done a little bit more with him mm-hmm. um, to really show that counterpart. Yeah. Because they're like, we know why Cap is the way that he is. We were told, but through exposition, why he was the way that he was. But I really wish I would have saw that clashing of ideals. Yeah, I think that that's what makes a that's what makes the the whole in Dark Knight, the whole Joker and Batman interrogation scene, one of the best scenes ever. No actions, just dialogue. Yeah, and it's just like we get both of them where they're coming from, and it, it's great, right? So that's I feel what makes again a yeah. villain has to be a mirror of our hero. Yeah. So I felt this one kind of fell fell you off. You had a very short instance of that on that bridge when he first very revealed himself short, kind of very, thing. So. Very short. But again, it was like they're screaming across yeah. the thing, which Come really at me, appealed. bro. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I put it at a 7.3 just yeah. above. Um, and then we get into the Avengers. Everyone's cheering. Everyone's happy. Mm. And then we get into phase two. Now, phase two was an interesting one. First half of phase two started off a little bit rocky for some people. Mm-hmm. Well, the back half really picked it up and led us into Age, Avengers Age of Ultron. Anthony, where do you stand on Iron Man 3? 6.5. 6. 6.5. And Swahili. 6.3. 6.3, I gave it a 7. Oh, you really liked it. <laughs> I am one of the few... That did. 6.6 6 overall score for Iron Man 3. Anthony. I thought it was cool. Uh, like, just, like, the overall use of the suits. Mm-hmm. And I thought the Mandarin that was, was like, at the time, it was it was fine. Like, I didn't really care. I wasn't, like, that butthurt over it. But I was also... water, by the way? I had forgot oh, water. It's fine. Yeah, I'm good. You're okay. What year did this come out again? Oh, Jesus. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is 2014. So I'm going to say around 2013, 2012. Uh, 2012 was Avengers. So 2013 yeah. is a safe bet. Smart. Yeah. 2013, like I was like what 13 years old, so it didn't really matter to me that big twist. I still don't care yeah. to this day because it's like who cares? Like whatever, yeah. he wasn't gonna come back. Yeah, uh, I wasn't mad about that. I thought the suit was cool. I thought all the suits coming together at the end was cool. Awesome. Mm-hmm. But the way how he like kind of gave up being Iron Man and came back mm-hmm. for Age of Ultron was kind of like it was whatever. So didn't that's hold that point. much weight to it. It's mm-hmm. a very good point. That's yeah, that's a good point that it doesn't hold the weight to carry over. Like more Iron Man two carries the weight of how he is mm-hmm. in Ultron and that kind of stuff. But the psyche behind Iron Man three was good. Just for me, I couldn't bring myself to give it a higher ranking only because there's so many better ones before it. So the suits were cool, like you said. Um, I even liked the twist of the Mandarin. That was hilarious to me. And they found like one of the best actors out there to play him, yes, and like played a yeah. drunk uh, guy who like boozed and whored and whatever. But it was it was hilarious to me that they Down played a like, luck actor that has like, yeah, a, essentially exactly. almost a role of the uh, lifetime. The comedy kind of was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, one of the ones that stands out to me for some reason was uh, when he finally, when he's like chained up in the castle or whatever, and he finally gets all his suits back oh, and he beats yeah. all the henchmen. The one guy's there, last stand. He's like, you know what? Forget this stuff. I don't get paid enough. These guys are weird. Yeah, <laughs> and he's yeah, like yeah. out of there. So that was really cool about it. The the, mon- the barrel of monkeys, that was pretty sweet. Yep. So it was definitely moments. Um, it just wasn't, for me, it just, I couldn't give it a high rank because there's other ones a lot better in my mind. Hey, that's, well, that's why I wanted to make sure that we don't have any of the same similar scores. No, it's fair. Right? Yeah. Um, I gave it a seven. I didn't care 
I didn't I didn't care that everyone was butthurt about the um Mandarin. the Mandarin twist. Yeah. Um I like Guy Pierce. I felt it Very was okay. Good, yeah. I didn't think he was an amazing um villain. amazing villain or anything like that. Yeah. Um I liked what they 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 tried to do the demon in the bottle comic line in Iron Man 2. Yeah. But it was whatever. Iron Man 3, Robert Downey Jr.'s character, like Tony Stark suffering from PTSD from mm-hmm. global uh invasion. Yeah. And the way that and, and I, I looked up this one video where it was like psychologist looks up movies and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And he was pointing out how the anxiety the way that they handled anxiety in um Iron Man three was right, was yeah. proper of what they've been able to find in their studies. Yeah. I love Shane Black movies. Mm-hmm. And so Shane Black tackling this movie with his humor, that's why it was funny. Yep. All those little bits that were there, that's textbook Shane Black. Yeah. And I I loved it as a Again, it's another Iron Man story, but almost better than Iron Man 1. The mm-hmm. only difference is Iron Man 1 had his arc that took him from the Harbinger of Death or whatever to I want to yeah. change the world kind of thing. Yeah. This is him dealing with it personally. Even the child that they had cast was was funny. Like mm-hmm. He wasn't annoying. He's going to be yeah. back too. I, keep, I always forget about that. Yeah, he's going to be in yeah. Endgame. Um, oh, but, is he? Yeah. And I like the fact that whereas Iron Man 1 had him in the cave, yeah. This showed him being the tinker, him, this being the tool guy, this being the guy that was in MIT putting together his first engine, all that yeah. stuff. I learned more about Iron Man as a character in this movie than I did in the other ones. Mm-hmm. And I guess if it wasn't for the weak villain, it would have ranked yeah. higher and maybe even close to Iron Man. And That's it was, where I was. The, also the ending actually was pretty good, how he kind of let go of the of but the arc. To Anthony's point, though, for him to come back in Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of a thing that happens, though, in, in these movies where if one director does an idea mm-hmm. and then another director has to pick up where they left off and it's like, I already had a draft for him being in this movie. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of have to retcon that and yeah. just bring him in there. Yeah. So I I feel like they would have had an idea, though. Like they would have heard this and like, oh, well, we're trying to do something else. I yeah. totally get you. This was also before they discovered that they can have a tree and a rac- raccoon be a fan favorite, too. So <laughs> I can imagine that, yes, the Avengers was great, but now they're they're really I think this is where they were really planning to add and start the rest of the MCU. Right. Yeah. Because this is a very experimental time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thor, the Dark World. Anthony. Six. Six, two. And I gave it a 6.6. The number of the beast. So, (laughs) Anthony, throw the dark world. Why did you like it, let's say, better than Iron Man 2? I don't know. Or comparable to Thor, the first one. So I felt like Thor, the dark world, wasn't an awful film like everybody says it is. Yep. Yeah. Like everybody shits on these movies so much. Like they're they're not, like, I'm sorry. They're like enjoyable movies. (laughs) You're not going to see like, not each of these would be like a dark night level film, right? It's like really deep. But I feel like people just shit on it just because it's kind of like the cool thing to do. Like, people don't really have a reason. Like, for me, I thought it was an okay film. It was whatever. Yeah, I liked, yeah. uh, I really, my favorite scene was Loki turning to Captain America. Wow. Oh, it was yeah, a fun yeah. cameo. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was just like, it was an okay movie. Nothing special. Uh, it was like a different tone for the MCU, too. It was like mm-hmm. a darker film, which didn't yeah. work out for them, but it didn't work out as well, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I liked it just a bit less than Iron Man three overall, yeah. but it did have its moments for sure. Uh, but yeah, it just didn't didn't do anything crazy for me. That's fair. But it wasn't anything lower than that. I would say. Um, Thor: The Dark World. I gave what is it a six point six. So mm-hmm. I put it. I actually put it. Uh, no, it's it's my second. It's my third low mm-hmm. in so far. Sorry. Yeah. Whatever. Fuck. I'll try to figure out my It's like in the middle for you. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Thor was actually a lot funnier into the dark world. Um, True. Got they me. had his entrance, which was very similar to his entrance in uh, Avengers. I did like the entrance Infinity too. Infinity War, mm-hmm. where he came in and the, they dropped down and then yeah. he showed up, much like Infinity War. Um, he was funnier. Mm-hmm. He was charismatic. He was the likable character I wanted from the first Thor. Yeah. Um, the Dark Elves did nothing for me. Like Malekith did yeah. nothing for me. The Aether, I felt they kind of dropped the ball a bit. But what carried this entire movie was Thor and Loki together. Yeah. And it actually like like gives me goosebumps when I think about it. Loki, when, they tra- when he's in that prison and he finds out that his mom died. Yeah. And that freak out. Mm-hmm. And when they show him when he's sitting down and he's like, Dead, just yeah. destroyed. Mm-hmm. That was just like, 
that was Shakespearean in and of itself. And I don't, and I don't yeah. remember if Kenneth Branagh directed that one. So if it wasn't for their relationship in Thor of the Dark World, I wouldn't have felt even more for them in the Ragnarok and then Infinity War. So yeah. that's why I rated it a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. But overall, as a movie, I'm glad they finally got rid of what's her face, Natalie Portman. Yeah, I that felt, was good. I thought that was weak. Yeah. Weak. Gentlemen, mm-hmm. Captain America, Winter Soldier. Dun, 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 dun. That's not really the theme song for it, but uh, Anthony. So for the for me, this is the best MCU film. It's like standalone. Sure. So I'm giving it a ten. Oh. A ten. 9.8. 9.8. And I gave it a 9.6 because I don't have anything above 9.6. Oh, wow. 9.8 uh, overall. 9.8 overall. Um, I don't, I mean, you gave it a 10. You freaking love the hell yeah, out of it. I and do. again, this is in the MCU, right? This is, this is all ranking from the MCU. So it being your favorite movie, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else you could add to that. Well, I just thought it was the best, like, it was like a sleeper hit. Like Captain America was kind of like whatever. Like the first one was okay. Yeah. yeah. Like the Winter the first Soldier. One was a seven to you, and then yeah. like the first one came out of nowhere. It was like a darker one. It was a smarter one. It had that badass line from Nick Fury at the time. Oh, you mm-hmm. mean? The, oh, sorry, the second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it was just over. It was just a good movie. Like the hand to hand combat with Bucky. Like it was just like the Way trailer better. too, when he throws a shield and he just catches it with one hand. Just everything about that movie just had badass, memorable moments that you just like walked out like, oh shit. That was the time you really knew his powers and what he could actually do. The elevator scene alone mm-hmm. was oh, amazing. So, so good. For me, that's, yeah, that's where it definitely stood high. Not as high as, it's. I think it's my third top. Is it? It's my third. So it, it's up there. So. Just, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, I gave it a 9.6 just because I don't have anything. It, a part of me was thinking about starting it with it that high, but, and, and there's very few. Very so this is the top one for you. This is the top one for me. Mm. Um, I, I just, as a movie in and of itself, the only reason that I'm docking at points is because I feel that the Nick Fury coming back after being shot so many times was a little too implausible for me. I know it's a superhero movie. Mm-hmm. I get it. But he is not a superhero. He is a human. So I... There was just some parts there that I really had to stretch it, but that's point four out of the entire movie because, like, it was just a well done movie. It yeah. was like when people look at The Dark Knight and they're like, "Oh, that's a great superhero movie." No, 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 it's a great movie, mm-hmm. and the fact that it has a guy dressed up as a bat and another guy in makeup doesn't take away from the fact that it's an incredible movie. This I felt was the best put together movie. Uh, in the entire uh, MCU. Yeah. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Tree, raccoons, and bandits. Anthony. 8.5. 8. 8.5. Yes. 9.7. 9.7. 9.7. And I gave it an 8.9. One above Iron Man. This was only my second one for me personally in the 8 out of 10 category. So this is a 9. Nine. Beauty. Okay, Anthony, 8.5. So I thought Guardians of the Galaxy was much better than Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but I'll get to that one later on. But uh, I just thought I it, was like, it was such a sleeper <laughs> It was such a sleeper hit. Like, nobody actually yeah. gave a shit about the Guardians of the Galaxy. No one knew they what they were. Like, yeah. oh, like, whatever, okay, it's yep. gonna be a shitty yep. fucking movie. And it comes out, and, like, it's probably one of the most popular MCU, like, kind of or not even, I would say one of the most popular Marvel teams. Like, oh, yeah. you ask them who your favorite Marvel team is, like, yeah. people wouldn't say X Men or Fantastic Four. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy would be up there just because yeah. of this movie. That's a really good point. Uh, it revived a whole, like, dead franchise, too, like, for the comics, especially. Like, yeah. they wouldn't be making Guardians of the Galaxy comic books right now. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So yeah. it was just like, yeah, it was yeah. just overall. It was, it was a massive hit. The, mm-hmm. the music behind it, how we were talking about scores and like this yeah, one This one made sense to have the music. All yeah. music, all hits. That revived all those songs. Even for myself, there's some I never, or I've heard before, but I was like, okay. But once you see them in that movie, you're just like, it does something else for you. Kind of what It kind of yeah. what a uh, Guitar Hero did for me. Where yeah. it revived a bunch of songs from like the 70s. Yeah. And like earlier, like rock songs from there that I was like, yeah. oh shit, it's so yeah. good. Now I got a full playlist from Guitar Hero. Yeah. Yeah. No, the coming together of that team was very interesting with our, how it all happened. Yeah, I put it one above Iron Man only because it was A, the sleeper hit that you mentioned. B, it was so well done. All the characters were really well done. And they made a tree and a raccoon like Lovable. people's favorite characters. Yeah. Like that's even now when we already have seen a bunch of stuff, it's still really messed up to think about. Yeah. They introduced the power orb in such a great way. They introduced all the characters in such a great way. And Peter Quill as a character 
they started his arc so beautifully that mm. led to his decision in Infinity War, right? The decision yeah, that people yeah. like shit on him for. Uh, but it all started here, and you always understood his character, and mm. you, like it was so good. All the characters, the world was great, and because Thor: The Dark World decided to poo-poo on everything and make everything like that really weird green and brown, yeah. it was like no, no, no. Space is like bright, and beautiful. Shit. Yeah. And gross at the same time. It's bright. It's colorful. There's so many different things going on. Yeah. And I think that set the stage for other movies to be like, no, like our our universe out here is awesome. Even though it was literally called the Dark World. So I kind of get that. But for Guardians 1, yeah, that's why it got the 8.9 uh, for me. Uh, uh. So that's a 9. Then we get into Avengers Age of Ultron. And then we get to Ant-Man. Anthony, what did you put? ant Man. Well, I've already given a seven, so seven point one. Ooh, seven point one for Antony. Seven five. Seven five for Vashiel, and a six point nine for me. Overall, seven point two. Seven point two. Nice, yeah. Anthony. I just thought it was like another one of those kind of sleeper hits. Like, is an Ant-Man's a character you don't really, you never heard of? Definitely. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really enjoyable. It was like unique. It was cool how he had the power and how he shrunk in the like bathtub. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, that was a great scene. I just thought it was just like a unique thing to see because like not, not a lot of superheroes you kind of like get into the shrinking mm-hmm. aspect of it mm-hmm. or it'll be really well done. So mm-hmm. I just thought it was interesting to see. For me, Paul Rudd was the surprise. Like when sure. you heard he was going to be an, a superhero, you're like, what? Really? Paul Rudd? Mm-hmm. But it worked. He was great. And then the Luis, yeah. Michael Pena would like made it for me. And yeah, like, yeah. I, I still want them to do a recap of all the MCU stuff with his little montage. That I would, would be, surprised be if they're working that would right be now. brilliant beyond yep. belief if they pulled that off and got every actor on it to do their little bits. Like I could only imagine he would, the guy would lose his breath, but <coughs> holy crap, that'd be amazing to see. <coughs> Excuse me. What was like right before end game? Like right after the, that's where right, the end credit. No, not oh, end before. Credit. Like right before like they had their like thing. Then oh oh shit, yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome. Like the cold open <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> that'd be such so, a weird way to set the tone for this. But, it's like all our friends are gone, but for me, the characters definitely made the made this what it is. But yeah, sleeper hit for sure. Um, I used um, so this is one of the ones that I springboarded. I used Thor: The Dark World to springboard off of this one. So I gave mm-hmm. that a six point six. This I gave a six point nine. Um, yeah. Again, sleeper hit. They had some issues with the directors. I really wish I would have seen the Edgar Wright version because I think Edgar Wright is a really oh, good director. Yeah, because they changed to Peyton Reed after, so that's why I was like, this could be their 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 actual disaster, right? Yeah, but it wasn't. Really fun, really good. Um, it was more lighthearted than Thor: The Dark World overall. It was really clever. They did a really good job. I loved how they did those shots where it was like pulling back to see what's actually happening, like with the train. I mean, you saw it oh, in the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like stuff like that where up close to them, it's like explosions and everything. And from far away, it just looks like things <laughs> are just... Yeah. So um, they did that. Villain, again, super weak, uh, yeah. really annoying. Michael Douglas is great, though. And yeah. uh, Evangeline Lilly was really great in it, yeah. too. So that's why I gave it a six. Speaking of villain nine. stuff, have you been following IGN's uh, things on Instagram? How they're like ranking all the villains and stuff Are like they? that? Yeah, they're doing kind of the breakdown, kind of like what we're right. doing almost. Um, okay, phase three. We're starting with it. So poor. Landline. We still have a landline in this uh, in this property where we're recording from. Yeah. If you don't remember what that is, look it up. <laughs> I think the battery's going to go off on your About 15 laptop. minutes. Okay. Uh, okay, Civil War. Go. Nine. Nine. Nine, nine. 9.9. 9.9. And I gave it a nine. Um, yeah, this is the one that I wasn't sure if we we're going to have on the list because it's almost not fair. Uh, that puts us at a 9.3. Um, but at the same time, it's Civil War. It yeah. went from, like, I don't know. There's not much else. Like, do you have any anything that kind of, like, well, really I feel like it's, it, I enjoyed it a lot, but I don't know how a movie be above this one. Yep. And so I feel like it's only fair because this had like a bunch of superheroes and also had Spider-Man in it. So totally. it's like, I'll like, rank it down a bit just because just to make it more fair because I liked it just because Spider-Man was in it. Honestly, that's why it's so high. Sure. Mm. Yeah. There was one other movie that was above this one for me. Yeah, me so too. that's why it ended up pushing <laughs> things just a little like jum- jumbling things up a bit because like yeah. from like even when I went Thor and Captain America 7.2 to 7.3. Like, what's a point one, really? It's a very small transparency, yeah. but a little bit larger one for the way that my list ended up working out. Go. Uh, yeah. I, the fact that it was an ensemble thing, I didn't think it, was, it wasn't a fair ranking, but I, I liked it even better. The The amount of character development you saw Bucky back into, you first saw a sign of Black Panther, 
Uh, oh, great intro to Spider-Man. Yeah, uh, just the way everything turned out was amazing. And like, obviously the fight between Iron Man and Captain America, like it broke you a little bit too, to see that happen. And uh, like, I know for you, like the one of the best lines, like I was your friend too, kind of thing. I'm still pissed off. And this is why I gave it a, a one. I was going to go 9.1, but they didn't put the one from the trailer in the movie. Yeah. Because the one in the trailer was like, so was I. It, it, when he said it in the trailer, he actually felt really sad. Like, yeah. But I thought I was too. So you're saying but the tone the trailer, changed. It, the way that he said it movie. in the movie was like, so was I. Yeah. Like, very Mad. straightforward. Yeah. But I get that version the too. The tone works. Okay. But Zemo was actually an, a decent villain to break them from within. Like that's And that's his yeah. big thing was like, you know, a nation destroyed by its enemies can rebuild itself, but destroyed by itself can't. So I, I just felt a lot good. of I felt a lot of things in his plan had to go just perfectly for it to work out. A little so, too perfect? Yeah, like... And you uh, really, yeah, like yeah. if if they had kind of shown him like they've shown Thanos where he's kind of working on things, slowly, yeah, 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 kind of like in in uh, Iron Man two with Whiplash where he had that board kind of looking at Tony Stark's history, his life, yeah, maybe that would yeah. have helped a little bit more. It was still, you know, yeah. it still was great. I thought I like Daniel Bruhl. I think he's a great actor. Yeah, right. So I was a, um, a fan of that. the cameo with uh, what's the um, Stan Lee was mm-hmm. good with the Tony Stank. Yes. That kind of reminded me of like how, uh, how about your mother, like uh, Swarly. Swarly. <laughs> it was like Tony Stank. Now it's like, okay, Mr. Stank. <laughs> Should we say bye to the live show oh, before we go off? Yeah, we're going to, we're going to go off. Uh, so everybody that uh, the few people, all two people of you that were here. Uh, <laughs> we had multiple come in and out. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. Goodbye. Ciao. And we're going to keep going uh, for people that are listening. I'm glad that this this episode actually picked up a little bit more because it really started off super shitty. Yeah. Also, I was super tired. I had to work out of town. Ooh, My seems a little bit fucked up lately. Like, I'm just always tired in the afternoon for some reason. It just like you hits find me. That? I and find that like, at like yeah. 4.30. Like, I'm, 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 I'm a little, I'm a little drained right now. I don't know why. Are you? I have, not, I have no reason days. not. I have no reason to be like drained. I took a two-hour nap before this because I didn't want to so lucky. So I'm like the place I'm working at is 45 minutes out of town, which is fine. But that drive and the heat, which I'm not complaining. We had like frost for five six months yeah. almost it felt like um but by the time i get home i'm like oh shit i'm tired a yeah. it's like a lot later than usual and b mm-hmm. i'm like we got like an hour before we gotta get, get go set up yeah um civil war yeah sorry we were done with civil war doctor strange uh, oh sorry i would just for my point i guess yeah a lot of things in civil war that were great everything was great the ensemble was great i love how they got the john wick guys to do the choreography for the airport scene oh yeah i for- thought that was brilliant of them to do and smart as collaborators and again the second jo- the second russo brother movie that knocked it out of the park it's like mm-hmm. they just walked in they just get what's going on here yeah um doctor strange was next after civil war oh and one of my favorite lines in all of the MCU was in Civil War, where Captain America is like, you got a lot of heart, kid. Where are you from? Queens. Then he turns to him and playfully says, Brooklyn. Yeah. And I just thought there was just something really special about that. And like when you really think about how big everything's gotten, and all of a sudden you got these two people, completely opposites of everything, mm-hmm. and Queens and Brooklyn, like, blocks we're, away. We're right where we're, we're with each other kind of yeah. thing. It was really cool. Um, Doc Strange. 7.2. 7.2. 8.4. 8.4, and I gave it a 7.5. We're actually like... All together, 7.7. 7. You and I are like getting... Like, we're close on a lot of these. Yeah. Um, Go, 7.2. Well, I, I was like... I was confused a lot. Like, there's that one scene where... like, And I get that was the point of the thing we'd be kind of confused, but... Um, it was like the skyscraper scene where everything was like kind of turning around. Mm-hmm. The mirror, the when they put him in the mirror. World I got like really dizzy like... when I was watching this movie, so it's kind of like. <laughs> oh, it actually like yeah. messed with you. That's mm-hmm. fair. Well, did you see it in three D? I think so. Yeah, yeah. We see, we've seen a lot of these in three D. I remember. So yeah, yeah. And it was just screwed my head, and I was kind of just like done with the movie halfway through. I'm like, okay, this is oh, shit. with me. Like I got a headache and all this, but it was a good movie. Like I think I saw it once afterwards in like two D, and it was like normal. Yep. I thought it was cool to see him like kind of like be that dick surgeon mm, yeah and then kind of like you kind of see him in infinity war kind of like still that dick but like kind of different yeah it's almost like uh um, dick with morals <laughs> yeah it, it's like it's it's a it's the tony stark arc yeah but he hasn't gotten to that point where he's super remote like he's still arrogant yeah whereas tony stark he is arrogant but he's still at least maybe a little bit more charming and stuff see it almost seems like his arc ended at the end of infinity war when oh you yeah! Think about it. He's like, it was the only way. Like Where I had to actually. So did, yeah, 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 it wasn't. It, it, but he had to do it for I, I a think, purpose. But yeah. it still, it still showed a different side of him sure, more than anything. Sure. Yeah. Um. You gave it a eight point four. Yeah. 4. Honestly, right when it got out, I I thought he was going to be awesome. Yep. Benedict Cumberbatch is amazing as it is. He seeing is the Sherlock uh, series and stuff like that on BBC. So good. But 
I knew after seeing what could be, I was like, he's going to be one of the most powerful people. And we kind of, I think by then we already had that glimpse of it's, it's eventually going to lead to Thanos. I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if he went toe to toe with him. I knew that right from the fact. And and he fucking did hard. Like, 100%. That was a great now, scene. We saw a big difference from where he was just training to become who he was in Doctor Strange. And then he got into Infinity War and he was already the master and he was amazing because then you break down all the powers that you saw in that one versus what he was able to do in this. Yeah. You know, he was getting there. But my guess um, is, sorry, my theory for that is that yeah. he used the time stone a lot to go back to and learn, learn a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So his mind moved forward, but yeah, time yeah, stood yeah, still yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, that's fair. I could see that happening, but uh, no, he was awesome. The, even the cloak was really cool about it. The fact that it chose him and even they were surprised that the cloak chose this, sure. whoever yeah. it's he like is. It's like this relic that's been in this yeah, box the whole time. Yeah. Exactly. The, the Dormammu thing was pretty good. Like the replaying time over and over just to drive him nuts. This sentient being. And like he That's literally where, dest- de- destroyed. He broke a sentient, uh, like a, one of the one of the Eternals, I guess you sure. can say. Um, and it was awesome to see that. But That was the scene, sorry. That, uh, not that, that he studied, but that we don't know the timeline of how long that whole I'm here to bargain. Oh, yeah, yeah. He could have done that a million times. Yeah. And in those times, he was getting better and better. So his learning curve ended up going from yeah. like the bottom to just like yeah. all the way there. Dormammu. Like he, Dormammu. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm with you on that because I thought that was one of the most clever ways they could have done that. 100%. Like, they could have gone the Green Lantern route and he like just fights this big cloud in the sky mm-hmm. kind of thing. But uh no, yeah. um, a lot of your points and a lot of your points. It was it, it was clever. It was good. Yeah. It was uh, good characterizations. The effects were really cool. Mm-hmm. It was really trippy. It didn't bother me as much. I felt, I wish they used Mads Mikkelsen a little bit more because I'm a huge fan I of see, him. Yeah, he was really good. As I, I always liked he him was, as a villain. But he, he was good when he was in it, but yeah. he wasn't in, in it enough. Yeah. I wish there was more of it there. Mm-hmm. Um, the Tilda Swinton whitewashing thing was a bit of an interesting take on it. It didn't bother me as much from a from a character standpoint because yeah. I think she's a great actress. Um, the way they said it should have been like an well, Asian it, actor. Okay, so the the one he addresses when he first goes into the um, what's it called? Comertage. Comertage. The older um, Asian gentleman oh, yeah, with the yeah, beard. Yeah, yeah. That's actually what the original one looks like. Oh, okay. And then you have Tilda Swinton yeah. to do the bait and switch. That's kind of interesting. Thing. So, um, but I, but she's a great actress. And I thought yeah. that scene where the time was slowing down and the lightning bolt was hitting, yes. I thought that was beautiful. Yeah. Really well done. Um, and yeah, maybe a couple times the humor went a little too too much. Like, mm-hmm. It's like, didn't need it here. Mm-hmm. And then the his cape reminded me a lot of the magic carpet from Metal Hat. Yeah. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Anthony, how low can you go? Zero. No, I'm just two. I was what? like, holy I was like, shit. Dude. I'll, give it a, I'll give it like a two. You're giving it that a bad. two. Yeah. Guardians 2 I'm is gonna, getting a two from Anthony. I'm going to mess you? up your skill here. Seven, eight. Wow, seven, eight. I enjoyed the shit out of it. I'll let Anthony go first, though. So Anthony. 5.4 overall. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was Guardians of the Galaxy 1 with the same jokes, same mm-hmm. rehashing. But the jokes they had were funny first. Oh, like after the 14th time, they fucking said the joke. It's like, okay, like we get it. Mm-hmm. Like Drax calling Mantis ugly. It was funny the first time. But he said it, he just kept going on and on about it. It's like, like stop beating you. the dead horse. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like really basic. Like I saw the plot was coming, how he killed his mother. Like I didn't think it was like that, like whatever. I wish they wouldn't have shown that part in the beginning. I don't think, I think they, they should have shown him maybe going off with a girl and then that's it. Instead of showing that mm-hmm. they like fell in love. Cause you knew obviously like, yeah, I hear you. So. But also like in their really serious fight where he found out his mother died from his father and they're fighting, he turns into Pac-Man, which I think like, okay, it's like appropriate for the movie, but like in that setting, like that'd be like, Batman cracking a fucking joke when he's trying to kill Superman in BVS. Well, I think he he mentioned a Pac-Man. Well, he did. I know he mentioned it before. Yeah. But I'm just saying like, that's why it was. It was in a serious fight like that. I just feel like it was kind of like, oh, okay, well we get it. Like it's Pac-Man. That's cool. Uh, I just figured it was too funny. Like it tried to be too funny, and it was funny. I'll give him that. But it just like they kept rehashing that joke. Mm-hmm. And they said Baby Groot was not going to be there to sell merchandise, and he was there to sell merchandise. That's all he was there for. <laughs> but they said point. he wasn't going to be. And that's I mean, why he was I disliked also it. baby. He only had the he didn't do much anyways. So. Yeah. I liked it. I it had much of the same feel of the first one, not as much because the the first one like came out like swinging hard for me. Definitely right that it did rehash a few things, but that never bothered me. I really enjoyed it. The colors got even more vibrant, especially being on Ego's planet, and even yeah. like the the open was great. The that montage, was- like apparently, it took them like a long time to choreograph and edit that. So the amount of 
you know, editing that went into this, uh, the arc with Yondu where you realize what really happened. So it was, it was emotional at the end of the day. You see who his real father is. Like how he said, it's like, he may have been your father, but he wasn't your daddy kind of thing. And Yondu ended up being that. So it was a little sad at the end, how everything turned out. But, uh, the arcs of the, all the characters was really good. Gamora and, uh, what's her face? Uh, Nebula. Nebula getting together and finally hashing out. It was a little rushed for sure, but it's still, it still held for me. And I, I found it fun and cool. Yeah, I um, I just found it boring a lot of times, especially mm-hmm. in that middle ground. I thought the uh, making the ball and then playing yeah. catch was a little too much. True, uh, and Fair we're enough. just kind of sitting it's like, what? It's kind of like when you're at a wedding and you're watching them do their first dance, and it's a really long song, and everyone's like, okay, like it's mm-hmm. kind of awkward now. Like you get that awkward moment, mm-hmm. um, especially when it's quiet and like they have whatever it is. Anyways, yeah. Um, the Nebula and Gamora thing I thought was was good to see. The Yondu thing was interesting because the way it started off with him on that planet with like Sylvester Stallone, mm-hmm. you need to be Sylvester Stallone. Um, yeah. That part I felt. It almost felt like they were trying to make Rocket too much of a douchebag the whole time, like unnecessarily. True, yeah. And I, and I get that. So then he can come back and have his thing where he's now accepting the family instead of mm-hmm. rejecting the family because he's got the family now, but now he's rebelling against it and so on and so forth. Yeah. But yeah, that's why I put it below Thor the Dark World because there was a lot of moments hmm. there where I can – because it was a 6.6 and I put yeah. this one at a 6.4. Um, just for yeah, a lot of those ones. I like the fight at the end, but I think I like a lot. I like the fight because of the music. Mm-hmm. Like I like that fight because of the music more than anything else. Yeah, the scene where he was trying to get Groot to get the hat thing yeah, yeah, that yeah. went on too long. The button scene, which they showed in the trailers a bunch of times, yeah, that went on too long in the movie. The duct tape thing was really like yeah. okay, like I found that funny. <laughs> no, it, it, it was funny, but it was when you really on. think about it. You're like, come on. Like, there's gotta be something else anyways and then yeah. the Drax thing like you mentioned I thought was like a little too too much right yeah, yeah. but that's also I have an issue with the way they've been doing Drax where he's just this comedic thing he's called Drax the destroyer let him destroy yeah. something yeah like even a box give him a box he can destroy hmm. uh, Spider-Man Homecoming Anthony 8.9 have I given that out I don't think so no you're not a, no 8.5 was uh Another one, 10 was it? Yeah, so 8.9. Yes. And 7.7. Seven, seven. Oh, we have the same score. Cool. 7.7. Seven, seven. I was surprised I thought you were going to put it higher, actually, because I know you like Spider-Man quite well, a bit. I love Spider-Man, but... Compared to everything else, it kind of falls again, a little bit to, lower. It was, uh, it's, called, it's called juggling it with, the, with everything else yeah. because they can't... I agree. So, so 8.1. 8. 1. Yeah. That's a very good score. Anthony, 8.9, you like this the most, go. Well, everybody always, like, bashes it because it's not, like, comic accurate or whatever. And it's like, you know, you're seeing a fucking movie, like, enough with your comic books. If you want to be yeah. comic accurate, go read a goddamn comic book. Well, and that's why you don't have an issue with the Iron Man 3 twist. Right. Neither do I. Yeah, mm-hmm. Totally good. But, like, uh, people are bashing because it's Iron Man Jr. or whatever. And I didn't care. Like, I thought it was, like, they had to, like, show people, like, he's a part of this now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought Tom Holland did a really good job. It felt like Spider-Man. Yeah. It was unique. Like, I like Tobey Maguire, but, like, I like Tom Holland, too. Like, I figure... I like all three of them. Yeah. Like, they all are something else. I thought Andrew Garfield was still a good Spider-Man. He was just in yeah. shitty movies. Yeah, but I, I... Tom Holland definitely portrayed... Yeah. yeah. Better. Sorry, so, anything else? But, no, I just... I was an enjoyable movie. I had fun watching it. Like, it was a fun movie to watch. Mm-hmm. I've seen it other times, and I still had as much fun watching it. Mm-hmm. The Vulture was cool. Like, they made the Vulture a cool guy, like so a cool good. villain. Mm-hmm. So good. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. It was enjoyable. Uh, yeah, very enjoyable overall. Again, falls guns and there's something, there's other stuff better for me out there. So that's why I kind of put it underneath. Um, the relationship between Tony and him was very interesting, especially like after the whole ferry boat scenario, like where he's like, Great. that was like really emotional. Like if you can't, you know, if you're nothing without the suit, then whatever kind of thing. I remember the exact Would, line. Yeah. If you're nothing without the suit, then uh, you shouldn't you have it. it. You shouldn't have it. Yeah, yeah. Which was a, which was a great scene for Iron Man himself because yes. that's when you're like, he He's, gets it now. He learns. He's there. Yeah. 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 No, it was definitely very interesting how everything played out. Um, yeah, Michael Keaton was great as the Vulture. Yeah, he was a very—he's always great in most of the stuff that he does. So, I liked him. I almost popped this at an eight point one, but I think because of the progression of the movie and the way that it is, like I like him as Spider Man. It was mm-hmm. great. Hot Aunt May is Hot Aunt May, and I love Marissa <laughs> Tomei. The, ben, um, the the what is it the uh, Benjamin Button of Aunt May's? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Vulture I thought was just 
awesome. I thought it was great. That was Anthony cracking his neck as loud as he possibly could yeah, for everybody. Um, self crack. <laughs> it was, uh, Vulture was awesome in it. Yeah. Um, his crew was okay. I just felt just, it was a lot of like the progression of the movie was like the same thing. So Peter does something bad. Iron Man bails him out, does something bad, bails him out, does something really bad. Then he has to, like, I it just felt like very, I could see where it was all going. <laughs> yeah. It was very believable. I didn't care for the Flash Thompson character at all. I liked his friend. Ned, yeah, I thought he was good. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the MJ thing, I kind of felt that they made her too Nickelodeon, like too, I don't care about everything. Like, it yeah. was just, you know. But, but you see her change throughout. Like, she starts getting her own feelings. So, no, it, was, no, it no. should be interesting how it comes out in the, the next one, Far From Home. But I'm just talking about yeah, this. Yeah. Movie, yeah, right? yeah. So, where she goes from there, like, I don't have a problem with her. I, I thought she was clever. I just thought they kind of, yeah. sometimes she'd show up and it took away something from me. Yeah. And then... um what was it? No, it was just a fun movie. Childish I liked Gambino, it. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but it was again. That was, it was another kinda, pointless. It was thing. pointless. Like, why but are I still you like in the, this? The interrogation thing was pretty good. I don't know. I no, found it funny. <laughs> but that was Tom Holland in that suit, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah. So that's where I have it there. Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Like a six point five. I'm just kidding. Nine point three <laughs> seems accurate. No shit. You're at a nine point three two. I'm at a nine point three. Ten. And- you gave it a 10. It's, it's your my, favorite it's one. My top one. I oh! love everything about it. That's surprising. I, I, if anything, I would have, should have put it at 10. But uh, Anthony, oh, 9.3. You and I agree on this one. Uh, anything outside before we let Mr. 10 put the 10 <laughs> in the 10s? So 9.5. I think it was like a really, like, this is the movie that made, like, Thor an actual, like, liked character by, like, pretty much the majority of the fan base. True. Yeah, uh, I love them. It was just a really unique one. It was kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy style, but the humor wasn't as like repetitive. Like it was pretty. It was just a funny movie overall. Mm-hmm. It hit exactly where mm-hmm. it needed to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like then, like it got a joke, and that was it. They didn't come back and keep repeating the same joke just because this was funny. Remember this? Like you mm-hmm. know, ten minutes ago. Yeah. It was like they knew that they were mm-hmm. funny, and they could just roll with it. Mm-hmm. Yep. I just thought overall it was a good film. I liked how he kind of you finally got that moment where you saw him kind of go Super Saiyan in a way. We super. actually like ascended his power and like just went like god mode yeah that so was it was just nice cool. to see his progression I always like seeing super sane mm-hmm. that's it that's yeah. it now uh yeah before i let you get to your 10 yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i loved everything about this movie why didn't it get a 10 or why didn't it get like a 9.5 or something i don't know i just picked 9.3 because i couldn't pick between a 9 and a 9.6 because i love this movie to death but I know that Winter Soldier is just a better overall movie. Mm-hmm. And it's just one that's just like the way that it's put together and everything. This was just like, this was just awesome. Like everything mm-hmm. about it was just fun to watch. I watch it on repeat. My wife loves the shit out of this movie. It's her favorite MCU movie. Uh, uh, Korg is her favorite uh, mm-hmm. character of all time. But, uh, and again, this just doubled down from Dark World where they had the relationship between Thor and and Loki in that elevator scene was really nice. The get help, and then they uh, they they throw in the get help thing, right? Yeah. Like, there's just so much stuff to it that was just so good. I loved Kate Blanchett. I just didn't feel that she was menacing, and that's another reason why it didn't surpass uh, Winter Soldier because I felt that all of Shield being the bad guy was a much more menacing villain than Hela, mm-hmm. who literally was just trying to find the sword, right? Yeah. And so they they. She, I didn't feel that she was the villain she could be. She showed at the end, kind of. Yeah. But, like, throughout it, I was just really didn't care about the Asgard stuff. I just cared about mm-hmm. the Sakaar stuff. And yeah. all of that was awesome. So, even though I love this movie to death, it was just one thing where I'm like, Kate Blanchett's amazing. Mm-hmm. Incredible actress. But... To kind of reverse on all your points, the fact Kate Blanchett for me, the not menacing her voice for me alone, like, the way she talks, that... Like it yeah, resonates. Talk is cheap, motherfucker. Whatever, man. It's her. It's the voice how she carries. Is that it. the next That's, quote of the day? Yeah. Wish. Um. No, but everything's great. At first, I was like, they're gonna cut his hair, really? So good. But it turned out to be amazing, oh, especially so how it so happened. So good. Yeah. It's like such that a hack a, job. That was a good cameo and, too. And uh, him becoming who he is, losing the eye, was very interesting. How they resonated back to Odin and being the king and sure. become who he's not really wanting to become, but he's gonna have to do it for his but people. He wanted to be the king. He always wanted to be the king. Not in between. Not Thor too. No, but Thor, he's like, I, I want to go out and help and stuff. Yes, he, yes. he renounced it. He renounced but it. But he came back to protect it because of Ragnarok, his dreams with Ragnarok. That's fine, but he still never really wanted to become king until he realized, I have to do this. Okay. He lost his desire after definitely Thor won. 
at the end of Thor one, he lost his desire. In my mind, I think he lost his desire to be be the king. He's like, I still have so much to learn. I'm not ready yet. And even still, during Thor Ragnarok, he wasn't quite ready, but he knew what he had to do mm-hmm. to get to that point. Um, you want to say something? Well, you finish your thoughts. Just go after. Okay. Uh, Hulk was yeah, hilarious. Yeah, I didn't bring it, but that was awesome. Yeah. The Hulk, obviously the fight between them was awesome, but even the dynamic after the fact, like he was just a big baby and I, I found that super hilarious. He's like, uh, he's like, huh, kind of like having a tantrum as this big yeah. green monster. Oh, bad friends. Yeah, exactly. So it was very goofy how they actually did it, but it's, it worked so well and that's why I love everything about this. The, the Obviously, the he's a friend from work kind of thing and then Loki just going white in the face like, oh shit. Yeah, <laughs> so, but Lots. then he gets up and like screams yeah. when he does the same thing he does for Valkyrie Avengers. was yeah. good. Loved her. Loved so her. I didn't bring her up, was, but I loved her. It was really good. Yeah. Everything okay. about it was great. So not to take away from the discussion. Yep. But just to add it, just throw it out there. Go for it. Stan Lee could be final cameo in Endgame. Mm-hmm. After Endgame, we should do this for Stan Lee cameos. Agreed. Oh, I'm That's down for great, that. Yeah. That's a great idea. Okay. So 9.5 there. Black Panther. The last movie before we get into Infinity War. Anthony. I thought it was a good movie overall. Uh, do I have an 8.3 in there? Uh, no, I don't think I thought it was like, so. okay. So it was solid overall. Like, it was a really good movie, but it's like really overpraised, mm-hmm. which I get. Like, it's like good for, like, I guess the uh, black community. Like, it's really good for them. Oh, yeah. But it does, just because it's a good movie for them doesn't mean it's a great movie. Like, it's still a really good movie. Yep. I enjoyed it, but I probably wouldn't rewatch it. No, no. I, I've rewatched it a couple times um, already, and I, I enjoy it. The CG doesn't hold up as well on DVD, like at the end when they're fighting. Yeah, and no, stuff. that's what a lot of people say. I looked at it again. I was like, this. I don't remember it looking that. I will say it's lot. one of the best, uh, best villains. I'd say like one of like top five, definitely. Yeah. Killmonger. Mm-hmm. Killmonger. What was your score? Uh, seven six. Seven six. I gave it a seven eight. Why did you give it a seven six? Seven six. Uh, it was good, but again, it comes down to one of those ones where like I don't like it as much as the rest of them, and I yeah. it couldn't be in the eights for me. It just didn't fall anywhere because then i'd have to push obviously my thor one had like move everything yeah so but definitely it was interesting to see him fall then rise of course the technology was really cool the i i love the the running joke that came after is like the tolkien guys so like you have andy circus again and uh, martin freeman so like they were had the joke that there's the tolkien guys in this black movie the tolkien white guys so it it was very cool to see that again i didn't catch that yeah so it was was very funny funny at that aspect but it it was really cool to see everything so and yeah killmonger was an awesome uh, it's heartbreaking. Uh, it was actually like you it, felt it, for him at the yeah. end of the day. He had a bad plan, bad execution, no, had, good plan. But the sense is, well, he uh, almost sorry. had the execution. Execution, but we had yeah. our hero that ended up having to become exactly. Leader, right? uh, Umbaku was great. He was so awesome, great. and like they had his jokes, like how he like basically bark that uh, or gorilla like he did his which was hilarious said, like, for him he can't walk it well, or uh, can't speak, can't speak I thought that was there was some hilarious. funny videos that came after that like was office there? settings where it's like <laughs> <laughs> there's a it was pretty hilarious but that was good and then his like vegetarian joke <laughs> yeah 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 um, but everything about it was cool and then he had his Iron Man moment after in a sense when he did the press conference and it cut. opened Wakanda up yeah, to the yeah, world yeah, yeah. that was so a good point so it was very interesting how that will play and the, the Black Panther 2 when that comes out it'll be interesting how they carry on from there and who could potentially be the villain yep um yeah i gave it a 7.8 i thought it was some of the best performances in the mcu over like yep. from almost every single person mm-hmm. um just the movie the way that it was put together like it was it was put together well like it wasn't like it was like it wasn't yeah. put together well i'm just saying i thought the performances overshadowed that i like it was almost like the casino scene leading into the walk back to wakanda scene mm-hmm. and then killmonger showing up and all of that just seemed like that last little bit just felt like it rushed a little bit more than the first half. Yeah. So that's why for me it kind of fell a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why it, like it didn't fall go into the eight category, right? Because mm-hmm. that's where I have Iron Man and Gardens of the Galaxy one, right? And mm-hmm. it was very close to being that. I just felt, yeah, the performances were a lot, lot better mm-hmm. um, than the overall movie. Yeah. Uh, then we have Infinity War and everyone cries. Naturally. And we get Ant-Man and the Wasp right after. Anthony. I think 5.5 is fair. I agree with that <laughs> one. Okay. I gave it a 5.5. Seven four. Seven. Holy shit. I don't think you've given anything uh 
been given pretty generous. Been generous. Yeah, so six point one. Six point one. And okay, I guess since we're in agreement, why did you give it a seven point four? It was enjoyable. It was just fun. It wasn't meant to be anything crazy groundbreaking for the story necessarily. It was just meant to be fun, and that's what I kind of liked about it. Um, another montage from. Uh, which Luis. is from Luis, and the funniest part about that was him complaining how he loaded the dishwasher. I don't know why that resonates with me, but I found it the most hilarious thing. How he's like, you don't put the big, uh, big plates on the top rack. It's just ridiculous. So like he freaks. I don't know why that resonates with me, okay. but I just found it funny. I had fun with it. It was an interesting. You know, his montage, especially when he's in his house, just doing his activities daily, like kind of like yep. whatever. Yep. Um, the small jokes when he was like short and stuff like that, that, that was pretty funny. But I liked it as, I guess, as equal as that, man. I never, a little bit less, I guess you can say, but they were both funny and memorable to me. Anthony, go. I thought it was like really nothing special. I thought it was kind of like. It was also that time, I guess, where people really didn't give a shit about Ant-Man because they were just waiting for Endgame. So it also could yeah. just be suffered doing to that or suffer mm-hmm. because of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like I just I even said, like, I just went there to see the end credit scene and I knew what it was going to be anyway. So. But you need to see for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I give it I gave it two points above Iron Man 2 just because I felt Iron Man 2 was just, again, it wasn't that well Whatever. put together. And I know for a fact where it's been on record that Kevin Feige shoved a lot of stuff down uh, John uh, Favreau's throat to get things like. New yeah. elements and all that stuff. Um, yeah, it was fine. I felt uh, it wasn't close to the first one, obviously. Um, the Wasp was great. I just felt Ant-Man was just there to crack jokes. Like, I didn't True. actually feel he was the real... Like I, I, I was actually more interested in just seeing Ant-Man and her dad, Hank Pym. Yeah. Or, sorry, the Wasp. The Wasp um, Hope and Hank working on their stuff, trying to get their mom back. Than anything else, I felt they used the word quantum way too much. Like every yeah. second line was quantum. Um, Louise actually annoyed me in this one. Oh really? I felt I felt they thought, oh, everyone loved Louise in the sec- in this Let's one. Just Let's it. make everything Louise be Louise esque. Yeah, Louise ish. Um, at the end of the day, Ghost was unnecessary. Um, I yeah. Lawrence Fishburne was unnecessary. There was a lot of stuff that was just thrown mm-hmm. in there to add conflict. Walton Goggins. I don't understand why they made his character so important that he was going up against these people that could clearly go into his ear and explode his head if they really wanted to. Yeah. Um, or anus. Or anus. That everyone's going to. So that's why. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's Fair whatever. Enough. Like I, yeah. It's 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 higher than uh, Incredible Hulk and Iron Man two, mm-hmm. but mostly because Wasp is really good. And even now, when I'm thinking about it, I might actually s- switch those. But I'm gonna leave it. Hmm. I'm gonna leave it. And then we get to the last one before Endgame, Captain Marvel. Anthony, what did you give Captain seven. Marvel? A seven. Swahili. Six one. A six point one, and I give it a four point. What the hell? I give a seven, didn't I? Uh, I think so. Yes, you did. Round up to six point nine. Six point nine. <laughs> Does he have a six point nine? Oh, it's no, that's a six point five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So six point nine, six point one, and a four point two for me. I don't think we need to go into. Uh, I was going to give it. <laughs> I was going to give it. A, I was actually going to give it lower than that. Uh, I was. I was almost going to. So give five point seven overall. A zero. Um, a zero. I was close. I was actually really close. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to get into because I have the lowest score. I watched Wonder Woman over the weekend. Yeah. And it just reinforced how terrible Captain Marvel is. Everything about Captain Marvel, I feel, is uh, a blatant um disrespect for the entire marvel cinematic universe um carol danvers does not have a single character arc in the entire movie Mm -hmm. she is great from the beginning she's great at the end she learns nothing she changes nothing nothing happens to her character at all in all of these movies someone change ant-man for god's sakes turns into a good person and in oh i was gonna say ant-man and the wasp the relationship between scott and his daughter i thought was really nice yeah anyways uh, Captain Marvel, there was nothing redeeming about her um, character. Not that it needs to be redeemed, but everybody, even down to her friend, uh, was saying, you were such a great aunt. Everyone was like, oh, you were such so great. You were so great at this. You were so great at that. I can't work with somebody like that. Mm-hmm. And there's one scene in Wonder Woman where she's looking at one of the guys there that um, he's the, uh, I think he's the Scottish guy that mm-hmm. drank a lot. Yeah. And she was kind of like, I thought you were the shooting guy. Why aren't you shooting? And then the one guy comes up to her and be like, everyone's fighting their own battles. And she can finally realize that like each person is fighting their own thing. I may be super powerful, but I need to, I need to learn how to use that. And not only that, in the opening of the movie, 
they were telling her you need to un- like you need to realize your power this one they pretended like they were telling her to to calm her emotions but it didn't really matter because her character just went through the whole thing without a care in the world yeah. she had no arc whatsoever they re- reduced they they retconned a bunch of stuff in the MCU which I've already talked about and they reduced Nick Fury to the comedic black guy very similar to what they did in Superman 3 with um who's that comedian now I'm forgetting what the comedian is anyways they reduce him to the your typical cheesy funny black guy right down to the point where the girl that's never been to space before pilots it gives him the cat so she can shoot down the aliens but but even though he's the one that's part of shield mm-hmm. so there's so many things that I dislike about that movie the only reason it gets a 4.2 for me is the opening scene with her, Ben Mendelsohn, who was very good in it as Talos, mm-hmm. and it had the best Stan, one of the best Stan Lee cameos. That's the <laughs> only reason it gets even close to that four. Because I don't even there's very few things I've given less than a four in general. Because I understand like because it wasn't a poorly put together movie. It just was just a bad movie. Mm-hmm. Like it, the pacing was the same. It was typical. It was all that stuff. So that's why I have to go in it. And it was a lot higher before I watched Wonder Woman. But yeah. it dropped. So. I just enjoyed it overall. I thought it was okay. Uh, I was like lower when I first watched it, but when I watched it the second time, it like I enjoyed it more. Mm-hmm. Some reason, like I wasn't, I was, I will be honest, I had like no intent to see it a second time. Like I did not give a fuck to see it, but it was either that or us. <laughs> and I'm like fuck us because I just don't want to see it right now. Yeah, that's pace wise. You definitely want to see yeah, like Captain Marvel yeah. again over us, and I, I'd agree with that too. Uh, I thought it was like people always compl- like I get why people dislike. Like, I get why you dislike. I'm not gonna say you're wrong. Uh, people stated that Brie Larson was really wooden throughout it or whatever, mm-hmm. which I disagree with because I was watching. I was like looking for it and she like seemed like she was pretty charismatic. Like she wasn't like over the top, like, you know, going on. Um, I think I what's it, more like the charismatic stuff is because it, it more is more arrogant than charismatic. Well, it was like sarcastic. My, I, yeah, I, yeah. I noticed her sarcasm so, a lot. But when, well, it, when, was, when it ranges from complete arrogance to just sarcasm, yeah. that does not make it's, range. It's a short, yeah. But she's also she's a, a good act. So. Yeah. She's a good act. So is Captain America. Yeah. Well, that's just like, yeah, but in World War II, there, like, there were moments thing where it's kind of like, oh, there, no, like, the, the, yeah. anyways, go ahead. go ahead. Finish off, sorry. I'm just saying, as a soldier, like, I didn't find it weird that she wasn't smiling 24 7 because, mm-hmm. like, if you look at many soldiers, like, they're not going to be like Captain America, like, going around, like, you know, cracking jokes in World War II. But yeah. it, it has nothing to do with, with the, the time period, it has everything to do with how the character is portrayed. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, that the character needs to be, like, the character needs to show you something that you actually like. Even Thor, like you said, at least. He walked into that throne room, the hammer up, like, yeah. I'm going to get this. And then his dad's like, nope, <laughs> no, you're not. But he actually had some personality. Pepper has more personality than Captain Marvel does. Yeah. But again, based on enjoyment. So yeah. that's just the number came to my mind. Bonkers. Good movie. Like, what I rate it, what I rate it like, what, 6.9 as a movie? No, well, no, because I usually rate things off enjoyment. Maybe I rate it a bit lower as an overall film. Mm-hmm. But for enjoyment, I think a seven's fair. Yeah. For me, it's my second lowest hulks under that for me and that's because it had more moments that i did enjoy based on enjoyment for sure um i agree with you on the emotional arc was not next to nothing or nothing at all and where it needed to be it should have been but ben mendelson for me was a big thing um the few fight scenes were awesome to me i like them they were fun obviously the ones where her hands are bound and then even yeah, at the even at the end when she she went super saiyan as well in her own way and burnt out the the AI from Z- what was it the Cree yeah so <clears throat> there was enough moments for me that I enjoyed it more than uh, Incredible Hulk but it just fell slightly short of Thor two and Iron Man three for me I I would put it actually even keel minus our scaling system but it falls on the lowest end of those things I so. also do stand behind my statement saying that they shouldn't have used that song for the fight near the end because they should yeah have. It was I a, watched it was a complete it was cringy yeah oh, okay. but I watched like I was re-watching or whatever like again I was like maybe it was just me but I was like no like this isn't like this doesn't fit yeah they could have doesn't done, fit there's so many other better ones they could have thought of for sure yeah so. and it didn't have to be as cringy and on the nose mm-hmm. okay that's it let's wrap this shit up because we've gone almost my an hour and a half <laughs> um, okay so Again, if you've been following and writing down, if you're listening or whatever, that's great. Next week, I'm going to have these all in order. So what's and next week again? Like, what are we doing again? I think we're, we're just going to have them in order because like they're all going to be in order. Um, yeah, we're just stating the order? Or? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. We're just going to state the order really quick. Hopefully, we'll have more to talk about, too. So that's it. Um, the beginning of the MCU rank. Next week, we'll have them ranked. 
1 to 18, whatever. We do the full list. Yeah, we'll do the full list just because we can. And uh, that's it. That's it. That's all. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Wherever you're listening from, if there is an option there to rate us, if you do want to rate us, uh, that would be very much appreciated. I usually don't ask for people to do things like that. But if you feel like it, great. If you don't feel like it, that's fine. We'll still see you next week. Um, you can follow Entertain Facts on Instagram. When? Monday? Nah, we'll see. Like Probably sooner. Probably in the Getting next bored. little bit. He'll be back on it. He's just taking a quick little hiatus. And uh, you can always follow uh, Entertain Facts. Yeah, for sorry, podcast. the F Word Podcast every time on Instagram. And we still have our email at the F Word Podcast at gmail.com if you just want to send DM an email. one of the accounts. Or yeah. DM one of the accounts, probably the easiest thing. So, um, yeah, that's it, for, an owl. that's it for this week. I'm G. <laughs> it's your boy, Biggity Fs. It's V. And oh. we are out. Oh, v for Vasily. <laughs> Vendetta. <laughs>